Hmm. Do I stick with the synth wave? I wonder. I do wonder. Do we stick with the synth wave? Hello, folks. Welcome to the Rogue Room. I am your host, Rogue Bitch. Sit down, grab a drink, chill out with us. As we get into some news, some discussions, some folks, things, some things about some folks. Yeah, I I'm good at words. How are you? Are you good at words? I, I know a few words. See, there's, there's this funny thing. When I was a child, I went to this thing called the school. And they taught us a few words. And I learned a few of those, and I remembered some of them. Clearly, I'm not fucking good at speech. How's it going, folks? What's good at, am I? <laughs> You're okay at words? <laughs> Uncomfortable with a misogynistic language. Yes, I, I will agree on that. I get the point being made, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but yeah, I, I, I feel like we should encourage, you know, as much as we like to, we should encourage uh, a lessening of specifically bigoted language, I reckon, around these parts, because this is my zone, I guess, I mean, that's not really the point I'm making, um, anyway, how's it going? I'm doing okay, I'm doing well, I'm doing fine, I'm doing dandy, I'm doing good. Let's, let's switch over to uh, the lo-fi, because that's better background music. It's better, less distracting music. I'm just going to try. Shifting the volume up just a tad. There we go. No, no, it's all right, though. You're fine. Honestly, I, I probably would have said the same thing before rescinding the statement. Oh, but yes, as the title implies. <laughs> For those of you who don't recall... A little while back, I made a... I had the discussion. A little while back, we had the discussion about the fact that Troy Levitt, the lead designer or lead developer or whatever this fucker's role was, at um, Avalanche Studios, the company that's creating Hogwarts Legacy. Um, what, uh, what was going on there is the guy had an anti-SJW YouTube channel. And he was outed for that, I suppose, in this lengthy Kotaku article that went into the history of his videos and the opinions that he held, which are very alt-right, very Gamergate, um, very pro-Gamergate kind of stuff. Like, he's... It, this guy doesn't seem like the best kind of person, and it's entirely unsurprising that a reactionary like him would be at the head of a project that's intrinsically tied to Joanne Kathleen Rowling. Someone Welcome else who is quite room. the reactionary. Resident Echoes, welcome to the Rogue Room, sit down, grab a drink, and chill out with us. Um, well, you're saying Twitch subs only direct half the money? Yes, it was me, Bernard. Howdy, Pooter, how's it going? You just love the lighting, thank you. I like my lighting, my lighting's nice. I wouldn't mind changing these lights up here, these fairy lights, with some colored ones if I can at some point. Because these things burn through batteries, like AA batteries, they burn through them. These are already dying, I replaced the batteries like less than two weeks ago. I'm going to try to find a different lighting solution for my, um, my, uh, what's it called? My, <sighs> actually, that's a good point, Resonant. It's a good, very good point. I, um, I do have this here. Let me show you this. It runs through double A's like a shitty vibrator. It does. Not that I would know. I haven't used my vibrator enough to burn through batteries. But anyway, what's up, Jacinta? Here we go. Um, no, it's actually fairy lights. I've got this. You see this little thing here? Let me show you this first. And then we'll come back to reactionary Hogwarts man. Uh, this is a little fake plant in a jar, and it's got little lights through it that are flickering at the moment. You might be able to see it very faintly. Um, but this is solar lit. So you put this in the sun, and I forgot to do it today, and it's supposed to be an extra bit of lighting in my room, but I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that. <laughs> Any vibe that is battery powered is inherently shitty, probably. Probably. I would like more of those, but they don't sell them anymore for some reason. They're really cute. Um, that was like four bucks, that little thing. Two, two, three, four, five dollars, something like that. Very cheap. It was at Bunnings Warehouse. And the one near me at the, um, yeah, I've got to get an outlet powered one. Twitch takes 50% of the subs unless you can negotiate better with partnership, which is unlikely. What I just want to negotiate is with you fine folks. Uh, is, is if you would subscribe to me on Patreon, not on here. 
You know, I prefer to get money on Patreon or coffee or whatever. <laughs> Put it under your monitor or something. That could work. That could work. But anyway, do we like come back to the, uh, should we come back to the Troy Levitt thing? Should we discuss this? Because the, the issue I raised with Kotaku the last time we talked about this was that they put out the, uh, the article about this developer and my original stance, and I retract this, I'm going to rescind this right now after hearing that his activity on social media has still been very reactionary. Um, originally, Kotaku put out an article about Troy Levitt, the game developer, at the center of a controversy last month K uh, at Kotaku's own hands. This article, we covered this. Hogwarts Legacy lead designer used to run anti-SJW YouTube channel. We went through this whole thing. He's got a whole bunch of, like, um, violence video games in Venezuela. We talked about that briefly. In defense of a guy who was accused by multiple women of an unsafe workplace for women. Um, more anti-Gamergate, or pro-Gamergate stuff. A thing about The Last Jedi, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. He had an anti-SJW YouTube channel. Kotaku published this entire novel on the guy, and my original stance was, well, it seems like he's focusing his efforts nowadays less on his politics and more on his, um, more on his development efforts at Avalanche Studios, the company making Hogwarts Legacy. And my thought at the time was like, Kotaku didn't need to publish this article, seems a bit redundant. Seems a bit uh, pointless to do so if it's, you know, several years after the fact. And what we have now is this follow-up article. Hogwarts Legacy Developer Quits Following Backlash Over YouTube Channel. Troy Levitt, the game developer at the center of a controversy last month after it was discovered he had run a reactionary YouTube channel focused on attacking feminism and social justice, has resigned from his position at Avalanche Software, developers of the upcoming Harry Potter hog game Hogwarts Legacy. Levitt announced his decision to part ways with Avalanche in a series of tweets. 1. I have made the decision to part ways with Avalanche Software. I have nothing but good things to say about the game, the dev team, and WB Games. I will be releasing a YouTube video about this soon on my channel. Um, I'm just going to say this one here. This point here. I will be releasing a YouTube video about this soon. It says to me, this dude is going to go full bore. I may be wrong. Correct me if I'm incorrect here. But I get the distinct suspicion this bloke, this dude, is going to go ham on his old style of content. And I reckon, quite frankly, I reckon the Kotaku article has just put him on the map to be an upcoming reactionary content creator. He is going to... He's going to go absolutely ham on this. He's going to keep putting out the same kind of content that he used to, but it's going to get a ton more traction now that Kotaku's basically made him famous. So good job, Kotaku, you fucking morons. You just gave us another alt-right chud to deal with. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to reacting to his absolute garbage content. Um, yeah, I, I reckon he's going to go off. I reckon, given how many people... Th this game is very controversial. Hogwarts Legacy is going to be a very controversial game because of Joanne Rowling, because of the article Kotaku put out, because of, uh, honestly, because of the, uh, the thing that was released recently, the information that was released recently, that, for example, you don't have, like, male-female as your gender, you pick a witch or a wizard, um, <clears throat> and I think your voice and your... I forget what exactly they said. Um, I think your... You can pick witch or wizard, your body type is separate, your voice is separate. I forget. It's really minimal, like, surface level, oh, you could be trans kind of shit to try to, you know, to, to play Virtue Signal, anyway. Um, that's, that's what I have heard. Generally speaking, though, you know, the association with J.K. Rowling has made this game very controversial. You've got, of course, people on my side of the equation where we're just like, fuck this game, fuck Joanne, fuck everything to do with her. I'm not interested in playing it. I, I don't give a shit. Um... And then you've got people on the other side of the equation who are just like, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy extra copies of this game just to piss off the SJWs that are angry at JK Rowling. And now, those people, those same people are gonna continue iterating that viewpoint, and they have been. They have been. Um, because they believe this is an effective cancel culture. They believe... Fuck, I hate cancel culture, dude. I hate the idea of it. It's so dumb. Anyway, 
Let's come back to Troy. We'll come back to the cancel culture thing in a second. Um, I felt absolutely secure in my position. However, I still wanted to resign for reasons that I will explain in that forthcoming video. I'm in excellent spirits and very pleased with my relationship with WB and Avalanche. And if we go back to a little bit of context, as Kotaku reported in February, among Levitt's videos are lengthy defenses of John Lasseter, the Pixar co-founder who left his position at Disney in 2017 after allegations of sexual misconduct, and Nolan Bushnell, the Atari co-founder who Kotaku is reporting, found to have fostered a toxic work environment for women. In some of his videos, Levitt expressed support for Gamergate, a movement that fostered harassment against women and other minorities in the gaming industry, and criticized Anita Sarkeesian's Tropes vs. Women series as an uninformed fringe position. Levitt discussed his opinions on Gamergate in depth during a 2017 interview, saying, Gamergate, while painful at times, on the whole proved to be a good thing. In the wake of this revelation and continued opposition to Potter author J.K. Rowling's transphobic views, it was reported last week that the game will feature some added customization options related to gender. Asked for comment, publisher Warner Brothers tells Kotaku, senior producer Troy Levitt has made the decision to leave Avalanche Software. So, it, it's kind of amusing. Um, it, it comes across. What we're looking at here is that he's just decided to leave the position. And I don't doubt that at least some chunk of that is him seeing the Kotaku article, him seeing the response, and him saying, I it's about the time that your boy cashes in on that YouTube money. I reckon there's a market for this guy. I reckon he's going to have some kind of a, uh, an increase in following after Kotaku made him a household name in the, uh, in the reactionary space. <laughs> Hello, Story Girl. How you going? The <laughs> best novel, best fantasy novel series post WW2 is Lord of the Rings. Wait, was that post World War II? No, the gamer version of Ben Shapiro is the quartering, and we'll get into him. There's been some more controversy, um, but he, let's let's talk about that, Dell. As you said, the dev that had to quit because of those filthy SJWs. What do you think? Like, let's just. What do you think the response was to? Let's just use Kotaku's own tweet of this article. What do you think the response has been to this? Let's let's let me read a tweet for you. Let me read a tweet for you, friendos. Funny that people are losing their jobs over their political affiliation. It reminds me of another period of time. Can't quite put my finger on it, but I'm sure some ex-MMA fighter made a passing comment about it too. Cough. The man left his job voluntarily. He's allowed to do that. He didn't lose his job. <laughs> Excuse me while I sniffle right into the microphone. He didn't lose his job. He quit. He opted to quit. Loda was in the 50s. I didn't know that. Yeah. These people are really latching hard. By the way, can I just make a, um, can I make a side note? Right, can I make a side note? These people screeching about cancel culture and all of that. What was the, what was the go way back when like Eminem was famous? You know, all these people who screech about cancel culture, screech about people being canceled are conservatives, right? They are blatant conservatives. And what were conservatives doing with, say, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, with Eminem when he was at his peak? Um, Dungeons and Dragons, just throwing this out there. What, what were they doing round about those, those time periods? Just ruminate on it, if you will. Contemplate. What those particular people were doing. Wow, thank you, the children. They wanted to get rid of certain people, certain types of media, certain this and that. This is not safe. This is dangerous. They shifted the goalposts, and now they are allegedly the victims of cancel cult. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, Zami. How's it going? Um... Looking back, to be completely honest, you can see how Eminem may have been bad for kids. Oh yeah, he absolutely is, but that's not the point I'm making. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that the conservatives, especially the Christians, wanted Harry Potter cancelled. Yes, honestly, Kez. <laughs> that's the funniest thing. It's like Harry Potter was one of those original satanic panic, well not original, but was definitely a victim of the satanic panic uh, right-wing attempt at cancelling things. 
They didn't want Harry Potter on shelves. They thought J.K. Rowling was a Satanist worshipper. You know, they said this was going to encourage witchcraft in children, and it was violating Christian values or whatever the fuck. And now those very same people, those exact same, the very same persons, are now turning around at any time. There's even a vague response to someone having a reactionary, contrarian, devil's advocate viewpoint. Those people flip their lid and say, CANCEL CULTURE! THE LEFT WING ARE LITERAL NAZIS! I'm losing my mind. I'm genuinely, like... My brain cells are slowly killing each other off in the biggest battle royale there ever was. Coming spring 2022. PC, Xbox, Game Pass, PlayStation, and Switch. Abigail's brain cells battle royale. They're all just going to kill each other off at this rate. I will be dead. Anyway. <laughs> um... There are a few responses in here. Uh, most of these people bashing were never going to buy the game anyway. Cancel culture at its finest. Cancel culture is not real. Um, everyone celebrating running upstairs to tell their parents that they won and to stop misgendering them in front of the rest of the family. They have the same, they have the one joke. Um, congratulations Kotaku, another fight won for you. Of course you would have preferred to have him fired. Now are you feeling proud? He didn't get fired! <laughs> He, he quit the job! He quit! He left the position of his own volition! And it sounds like he wanted to! And he's happy! Yeah, he's a reactionary cunt, but he's happy, he's overjoyed that he got to leave the job. Okay, who cares? Why do they th- Do these people not read the- like, the headline! The headline says Hogwarts Legacy developer quits following backlash. I mean, if you, if you just got the, uh, got rid of the following backlash, you could just say Hogwarts Legacy lead dev quits. And it's like, they just do, they can't read. These people can't read. Um, let me think. What else is it? Not as bad, not as good as being like over good riddance. Blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Quite a few people in here. Who are just like, ah, oh, cancel culture. They're canceling people again. Anyway. Anyway, all you can see is following. All they can see is the following backlash. But yes, if mental gymnastics was an Olympic sport, there'd be a lot of contenders for the gold. There would. Uh, did I see the Amazon logo change? Due to it looking, hang on. Due to it looking close to a certain bad man. I mean, Hitler, bad German man. Is that what you mean? I did see that. P I did see that it now looks like Avatar Rang. Uh, I can't believe there are people who got offended by Harry Potter. You don't know any Christians who are that crazy, and you know a lot of Christians. Their political party got hijacked by what? By people obsessed with consequence culture? But the left cancelled him just sounds so much better. Oh yeah. Absolutely. To them. You know, the, to the rhetoric they're trying to push, to the argument, to the discussion, the discourse they want to push, is that you can't say anything these days. You're not allowed to have opinions or the left will cancel you. You'll get cancelled! No, no, you won't. Again, like, we come back around to Gina Carano. She's now working with Ben Shapiro at the Daily Wire to produce some shitty movie that no one's gonna watch. But the reason she got let go by Disney is because she directly compared the treatment of conservatives in America. Okay, so just to clarify, the vast majority of the Western world is under a conservative leadership. And here's Gina Carano assuming and asserting that people disagreeing with her opinions on Twitter is the same as the treatment of Jews in Nazi Germany. Gina Carano genuinely believes, because of her difference of opinions, that a Kristallnacht is going to be did. To her and her compatriots. And this is why, like, and honestly that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, Disney had a target painted on her for a while because she had a number of reactionary viewpoints that she had espoused. Anyway, um, let me have a look at this. Hmm, Sammy? Hmm, what's up? Let me have a look at this. 
I am going to take my hair, skin, and nails vitamins. The shopping giant has quietly designed its redesigned its app logo. That is a wait. What? Quietly redesigned its app logo after a resemblance to re resemblance to Adolf Hitler. Hang on. Let me put a marker in this real quick. Um, there's no such thing... There's no such thing as cancel culture, just accountability no matter how entitled you think you are to special immunity. And there's a stream team on this fucking platform run by a reactionary dipshit. Um, run by somebody who... Let's, let's just tell a quick story about a person that I don't like. This person was pretty well known, well seen in the streaming community for a while, all over social media. You know, you, could, you couldn't go two seconds without spotting a post by this person. Everyone loved them. And then seemingly out of nowhere, they flipped and they had cultivated a, per they, they cultivated a community that was allegedly open and welcoming and everybody was allowed, and especially queer people really liked this person. And then they outed themselves like, oh, by the way, I'm voting for Donald Trump and I'm right wing. And now they've shifted to uh, YouTube primarily because, quite frankly, their streaming efforts were failing beneath them. But they also, in the, in the midst of this, created a stream team called Cancel Cancel Culture. Not real. It's not a real thing. People are allowed to disagree with your opinions. I'm sorry that people don't like... The fact that you hate the trannies. That's generally a disagreeable viewpoint. Like, that's just how it is. Cancel culture's not real. It never was. I will die on this fucking hill. Stop acting like you're oppressed. Anyway. Coming back around. That was a Gina thing. That was a Gina think right treated like... Wait. What, Sammy? Say that again. <laughs> Gina think right treated like Jews. Yes. Gina Carano thought that conservatives were being treated like the Jews in the Holocaust. That was the comparison she made. And she worded it in such a way that people who follow her, people that lap up her, uh, her viewpoints, who would lick her feet over these viewpoints, it was worded in such a way that they could interpret it and say, oh, that's not really what she was saying. She wasn't saying they're literally the Jews in the Holocaust. It's just that... Um, the differences of political opinion uh, 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 led to the Jews being gassed. The left of fascists. They don't have a they don't have a leg to stand on. <sighs> People that hated her when she was originally cast. <laughs> You're not wrong, Dell. These are the very same people. More often than not, <laughs> these are the very same people. Who, were, who would have lost their minds when, you know, Oh no, there's a woman in my Star Wars. Whether or not she's a good actress, I don't know, I don't care. Um, I've seen what, her acting in The Mandalorian, and that's about it. I really don't care. Um, you do think cancel culture is a thing? May I ask, like legitimately, why? Because everyone I've seen who has been allegedly cancelled has been fine. They've always got a platform, they've always got a following, and whenever they get cancelled, you know what happens? They gain more followers. They become more well-known. They get their name in the spotlight. If they're big enough, they get a book deal, or they get scooped up by another film studio. I refuse to believe what they, what they try to tell you, right? What they try to tell you. One sec. Let's hydrate. Hey, Arul, how you going? What they try to tell you with regards to cancel culture, the allegement, allegement, the allegation, allegement, that's not a fucking word, Abigail, Jesus Christ. What they try to tell you is that if you get canceled, they treat it like there's a, a mob of, um, what's it called? A, um, a mob of peasants with torches and pitchforks marching down the street to lynch someone, right? Like, that's how they treat it. That the moment you get supposedly cancelled, every single thing about your life is going to be destroyed. You will never live in comfort ever again. Never welcome happens. Welcome to the Rogue Room. Chronic Toxicity, welcome to the Rogue Room. Sit down, grab a drink, and chill out with us. How you doing? 
I'm being silenced as they post on Twitter, upload videos to YouTube and write in their blogs or if influential enough, say live on a news show. Yeah. This is why I refuse to acknowledge cancel culture as a real thing. These people always have a platform and when they get allegedly cancelled, they continue to have a platform. It's just stupid. Cancel culture is the exodus of reactionary bigots and abusers to an increasingly vile nexus of alt-right media that reinforces its own toxicity. Pretty much. <clears throat> Need to understand why. Need to understand why what. Now, the right wing tried to cancel you last year. They started to hound a restaurant they thought you worked at. They were unable to dox me, so they just invented stuff about me. Hilarious, but terrifying. Yes, indeed. And again, like, the, uh, the right has been operating under this model for a long time. They don't like something, they try to get it shut down. And yes, um, Kez, as you mentioned, the only one successfully cancelled may have been Sh Shane Dawson. <laughs> may have well have been Shane Dawson, who's still... I don't know what Shane Dawson's up to these days. Honestly, like, Bernard, you do have a point there. It's like, it's it's more often than not, the people screeching about cancel culture are the people who have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. It's a... It's ignorant of them. And that's by design. It's, it's designed to um, rile up an audience um, against an idea that, genuinely speaking, generally speaking, and genuinely, doesn't affect the person screeching about it. Um, but yes, there are there are creators with tiny platforms who get bullied into silence. I want someone to fucking try me, dude. Honestly, I want someone to... I would like to get to the point where someone fucking tries me. Go on, give it a, give it a crack. I want to piss someone off. <laughs> to the point where they try that shit. Not really. It'd be... It'd probably be good for business, though. Um, left and right, well, left wing, right wing. There's a lot of depth there. I want to take this outside. Um, you think when petty internet drama and people mass unfold and don't support them anymore, um, uh, it's being cancelled. That's not the, um, that's not what they say, though. That's what the people who argue against the concept of cancel culture, they don't, it's like if, if, if a bunch of people stop following you, um, does that mean your entire platform is gone? More often than not, no. Especially with regards to the people who are constantly talking about cancel culture. That's the main issue I have. Is these people go on and on and they'll they'll say contrarian things. They'll say devil's advocate things. And then they might lose a few thousand followers. Honestly, you know what? The closest I can think of at the moment to any sort of anything even vaguely resembling cancelling is Jim Sterling. I know, what the fuck am I talking about? Jim Sterling still has a significant following, except since coming out as non-binary gender trash, Jim Sterling has been significantly losing subscribers every single video they upload. They're not doing or saying anything that's particularly cancel worthy, they're doing their usual criticisms of the gaming industry content, but because they have been, because they've come out as queer, that's made a significant chunk of their audience uncomfortable, and they've just started leaving. They've lost 8,000 subscribers in the last 30 days. Why? Because they're non-binary. Because they're femme presenting, because they take estrogen. That's it. However, when you see people go on about um, how they're being cancelled, right? Let's just take an example of a reactionary viewpoint. Um, the trans women in sports thing. If one of these reactionaries were to state, um, I don't believe trans women should be, should be able to play women's sports. Right? I've been thinking a lot about this stupid topic, so give me some space here while I get this off my head. Anyway. Um, if, if they were to tweet, you know, trans women should not be in sports. And... Twitter flies off the handle at them. You know, like, they may lose some followers. They may lose some followers, but what's going to happen on the inverse is they're probably going to gain more who follow that reactionary stance. Who follow that transphobic stance. That's always how it happens. It, routinely. 
Your cat stepped on your laptop and put on your stream. Guess she wants me to say hi. Hey, Emmy Lilo, how you doing? Kato sends hugs, good. The term being cancelled is always blown out of proportion. Absolutely. Being cancelled basically means people massively stop supporting you. Basically, it just means you're in some drama. It's not completely destroyed and career ending, which is what they always say. They always say that. Um, Flipside is after James Charles nearly got cancelled. Wrongly, now, not Lepler. Um, now that he actually deserves to be cancelled for accidentally sending children nudes, no one wants to cancel him. I know. Extinction Rebellion is grade A cringe. Who? Or what? What's Extinction Rebellion? Uh, you're a member of XR. Um, oh, hang on, what have I missed? Oh, the fuck is Extinction Rebellion? Oh, okay, I missed that conversation, sorry. Um, what about trans sports? Having their own league doesn't solve the problem, honestly. Let's have a look at this. What is Extinction Rebellion? Is a global environment environmental movement with the stated aim of using non-violent civil disobedience to compel government action to avoid tipping points in the climate system Biodiversity loss and the risk of social and ecological collapse. Interesting. Yes, I am emotionally exhausted. How could you tell? <laughs> no, like um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this more um, efficiently and effectively in my next big video that I'm doing. But putting trans people in their own league doesn't solve the problem of exclusion, which is the main reason that um. You know, well, one of the one of the main reasons that we are uh, sort of fighting for the trans women in sports thing. It's usually trans women in sports. They don't often comment on the fact that when you give, like, say, trans men in um, when you give, like, let's just say, for example, um, the the trans athletes thing sort of loses a bit of steam when you consider trans men going into or being restricted from men's sports you know uh, if there are laws of a particular state saying oh this person was biologically assigned male at birth oh no sorry female at birth but they've been taking testosterone and puberty blockers and whatever else and now they're very very male presenting very very masculine very muscular but due to archaic laws they still have to compete in the women's division in wrestling or whatever, there's a specific case of that. I've forgotten who it was now, I'd have to go look it up. Um, and it was it was demonstrably, it's a dude beating on women. A trans dude who was in that league because of, again, those archaic laws. And then yeah, trans women into men's sports, very unsafe because estrogen and testosterone blockers have a significant impact on the body. I have heard of Greta Thunberg, yes. I'm um, surprised that XR isn't well known here. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't know everything. <laughs> they want to kick out trans women, can they just go ahead and bloody prove they have an advantage beyond already acceptable advantages, i.e. non-sex based genetic or financial advantages? Until then, they should shut the fuck up, Link, they should. Yes. <laughs> just joined Discord and sent a picture of Kato, let's have a look. Um, I can't remember if we wrapped up on that Hogwarts dude story, so anyway. Here am Kato. Can we get a can we get some Kato in the chat? Get that cat. Get that cat. Um so at least they aren't Greenpeace. I don't know what Greenpeace has been up to. Excuse you, Sammy, what's up? Dude, my arm is so itchy I'm peeling skin off it. What the hell am I doing? All cats are babies. All cats are babies. Oops, I've got the Troy Levitt thing up still. Why are, you, why are you able to get so many hydrates off? What's going on? I thought I had a cooldown on that. Because I don't want it to get spammed all the time. Honestly, I really don't want like the spamming of... The, I'm honestly just considering ditching a lot of the channel point rewards. Because I'm sick of getting spammed with them. <laughs> um, What are we talking about? We were talking about the lead dev of Hogwarts Legacy leaving the project. And like, I don't even know what to do with the pasture check anymore. I just... Yeah. Also, there you go. I don't have my ring on. Let me get my ring on. Let me fix that little situation, then we'll come back to the water cooldown is ten minutes. What the fuck? Have we just been going that hard on this? Um. <laughs> anyway, so we've done that bit. We've we've basically done that. We've we've sort of moved on. I'm gonna put another stream marker here. These tunes are so vibe, aren't they? Honestly, like this um. 
this gives me a, a good um, launching point. <laughs> yeah, your favorite. A good one. Um, I did see that, Errol. I did. Um, I did see that um, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 got fucking canned or whatever's going on. Got removed. Back to life because he didn't like the limited trans acceptance the rest of the devs wanted. That could be it. That could be it. And this gives me the, the thought to talk about bad faith. The bad faith argument. Right? Sounds like he was encouraged to leave. It may have been that, which is kind of funny given that in the original Kotaku article, um, they mentioned that the devs said to Warner Brothers and to Avalanche uh, that he showed them his YouTube channel and they said it was fine. They said it was okay. And the moment it was made more public, all of a sudden he's very happy to leave the studio. Which, I mean, I, we talked about um, how a person's particular political viewpoints can have some level of influence on the work being done. Gotta do some homework, sounds good. Emililu. Emililo. Have a good one. You want an Olympics where all where people take all the drugs they can get their hands on? Yes, please. Things are the dress in the outfit you posted. Wait, where? Let me have a gander. What'd you post? Where? Ah! Look at this. Look at that. Fancy! Fancy. Very nice indeed. I could get away with that, I reckon. I could get away with that. I could pull that off. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Sounds like some underlying shit maybe too. They might be using the trans thing to keep people from digging in. Digging into him much deeper, possibly. I, I get this. It was really kind of coincidental. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, um, I, I do believe they had good intentions adding that stuff in there. But it does definitely feel like it was it was largely a response to A, that article, and B, Joanne herself. To, you know, sort of make that... Um, we'll come back to that. Have a good one, Kez. I'm gonna go rest up. Beloved's aunt is having her 80th birthday tomorrow. This particular aunt has been known to run commentary on pawns. So that's gonna be a party. <laughs> Have a good one. We won't lick the toads, don't worry. We're not gonna lick the toads. It definitely does seem, especially knowing Joanne's particular transphobic viewpoints, it seems like they have gone the route of let's add some not specifically trans options. Actually, I have the article here that details. What is the what are the actual um, things that they've put into the game? <laughs> the character's voice, body type, and gender placement for the school are all distinct, okay? So you can choose witch or wizard as your body type, not male, female. You can choose your character's voice distinctly, and you can choose their body type. Um, can you get the link to this? This is what I'm referring to, by the way. It's just a Bloomberg article. So it's in the first paragraph. Thank you, Jason Scryer, for getting to the bloody point. I had to look something else up earlier, and I had to scroll down, like, like the headline was like, here's the thing that I need. And I wanted a paragraph that outlined the rest of the information. It was like 17 paragraphs down the article. It was ridiculous. And here's Jason Scry, just like, The next Harry Potter video game will allow players to customize their character's voice, body type, and gender placement for the school dormitories. Done. That's all I needed to know. Bingo. And it, it definitely very much seems like that is a response to J.K. Rowling. Like, it's, um, it does feel patronizing, don't get me wrong. But it is... Um, it is good, but at the same time, I'm still not going to buy this fucking thing. <laughs> and before it ends up like Cyberpunk's options, at least we won't have genital sliders or whatever the fuck. You know? You think they'll add a trans choice in games? Probably not, honestly. The closest you will get, more than likely, is, um, like, there are, they are adding more and more um, as time goes on. Like, it, it, we had it in Call of Duty black ops cold war your characters you got to choose were you male female or male female non-binary or classified i think or salt in the woods with cyberpunk i know <laughs> having the choice not better than changing the character is that not what these uh, people's issue is most of the time i I'm, I'm okay with um i mean saints row has been doing the trans thing forever um or rather the 
non-gender conforming thing forever, which is quite frankly what we should be doing. Um, I think one of the... Whatever, it doesn't matter, I I've lost my train of thought there, but I think it's a good thing to just like, if you have a character creator, just give us a bunch of options that could fall into either, you know, very obviously male, very obviously female, and all points in between sort of thing. Um, that's what I would argue for, that would be the best way forward, you know, multiple voice choices, multiple body choices, uh, etc. Yeah, Saints Row 2, like, technically if you pick a female character in Saints Row 2, you are canonically trans. <laughs> Um, um, people who have issues with the changes in video games. Is that one? Yes, I think I know what you mean, Connie. I think I know what you mean. Is it? Just give everyone Blender and make them do it. I mean, don't, don't go that far, but I think you could definitely um, add more customization options, and that's never going to be a bad thing. However, it, uh, it does seem like a response to Joanne, specifically, that they've added this particular way of building your character. Um, so they can say, look, our game's inclusive, you can be a trans wizard in the 1800s or whatever it was. Which, by the way, there were trans people in the 1800s, of course. Uh, somebody posted a really good Twitter thread on, like, transgender cowboys, which was neat. Um, <laughs> a lot of people identify as cubes in the spheres. <laughs> um, where were we? Um, you only buy bootleg pot of things now. Do you think trans... Uh, trans doesn't need to be an option specifically. No. Um, it'd be better to have, like, mass presenting, femme presenting, and wear whatever. Yes. Absolutely. Um, like, let's just say they do Sims 5. Um, like you've mentioned, the Sims have really good options. You can change your voice, organize clothes by mask femme, choose the option to have children or not. That's good. That's good and progressive. That's how you would go about it. Um, doesn't need to overly complicate things. You know, you can just add a few little options here and there that do not... You know, do not flagrantly say, oh, by the way, when you're choosing your gender, you can get man, woman, non-binary, or transgender man and transgender woman, or something like that. Like, be really glaringly obvious with it. Don't do that. You know, there's no reason to do that. Um, they can do it in a very simplistic, very to-the-point kind of way. By the way, Vidya SCW, I just saw that you followed four minutes ago. Somehow I missed it. Maybe I was talking over the alert or something. I'm sorry. Welcome to the rogue room. Sit down, grab a drink, and chill out with us, friend. Um, saying your Dark Souls 2 character, although she uses a female appearance, is trans! We stand. Uh, canonically, every single Dark Souls character I have, uh, I've played, I don't care if the timeline says this is impossible, every single Dark Souls protagonist in my run is the same character. Alright, get over it. The same person. <laughs> um... Uh, IRL, this happened. Genuinely curious if they'll be more sensible than IRL. Trans student barred from shelter. Yes, I remember that, NB. Um, mass shooter drill administrators couldn't decide whether the student should be sheltered with boys or girls. Yes, I remember this. That's fucking disgusting. Bruh. How in the fuck? <laughs> JK be like, no trans. And devs be like, okay, but let's make trans options in JK. <laughs> Just let people wear what they want and choose from all hairstyles regardless of gender. Yes, exactly. As far as I know on the subject of Dark Souls, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dark Souls 3? And in Bloodborne, I think all the hairstyles. I don't know about Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 1 had distinct hairstyles between male and female characters. But Dark Souls... Actually, you know what? I think Dark Souls 2, 3, Bloodborne all had uh, pick whatever hair you want. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Accidentally swipe fail misgendered. Meant even if he was forced out. Wait, what have I missed? Hang on. Um, even if it was forced out, you work in the media industry, you do what you're told, you're not in charge, you don't get to change a crap show because of your beliefs, you have a job to do and you do it. If you don't like the show, tough, shut up and do your job, or you're free to leave. Yes, true, exactly. Actually, it's honestly Wango. It's kind of debatable whether or not Gwendolyn is trans. Let's put a marker in this. It's kind of debatable whether or not Gwendolyn is actually trans because the law states that Gwendolyn is born a boy but raised a girl. At no point did Gwendolyn seemingly... I mean, again, we have to interpret here because the law of Dark Souls is very, very vague. Gwendolyn never states themselves. This is what's tricky. It's like, I think Gwendolyn is referred to in all texts as male. Um, 
But Gwendolyn themselves never speaks on it, never speaks on that identity, of course. Um, I think Yorshka in Dark Souls 3 refers to uh, Gwendolyn as her uncle. But yeah, the game genders Gwendolyn as a he, and all the lore tells us that Gwendolyn was born a boy, raised a girl. So at no point did Gwendolyn perhaps experience dysphoria that forced them to, well not forced them, but that compelled them to transition. It was instead, you had the nameless king, Guinevere, and then the third child, Gwendolyn, um, who was, I'm not quite sure why Gwyn decided to raise Gwendolyn female, you know, whatever, doesn't really matter, but, um, it's it's an interesting discussion to have. It's interesting to it's an interesting discussion to have. I'm just checking if my uh, my microphone filters are still on. They are. It's all good. Um, from what you've heard of Gwendolyn for your best friend, who's a huge Souls fan, Gwendolyn is more just a very feminine presenting male, which may be the case. Honestly, may just it may just be that Gwendolyn is a, a male god who is presenting female because they were raised female, but. Maybe they see themselves as male, maybe they don't, maybe who cares. Um, Japanese games do this with trans people a lot though. As I have heard, yes, quite frankly, the secret trans character, true. Actually, that might be worth looking into. Hang on a second. Um, I wonder if that's a trope. Is that a trope? Um... There's Vivian in Paper Mario, a fictional character appearing in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Um, in the original Japanese release and in European translations, she is a transgender woman, while the script in English releases was altered to portray her as a cis woman. Well, there we go. Uh, the way the Japanese version of the game depicts her and her gender identity has received some criticism. There's Vivian. Is there perhaps an article that details, like, uh... The idea of the secret trans character in video games. Because that's what Gwendolyn falls under, most definitely. Hello, Vanna, how you going? Hello, Amy, how's it hanging? Um, they were being edgy. They were being edgy? Do you mean from software? Poison in Street Fighter's trans? I think you've told me that before, Herbus, actually. My day's been pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, it's all relevant. It's all rolling has to stay relevant. Nothing else she's released has had the cultural impact HP has had. Yeah, true. Most definitely. Um, now I understand the Hogwarts thing. Far right Harry Potter game designer quits after raging at social justice warriors on YouTube. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, who needs Harry Potter when you have Sabrina, right? Um, but yes, I do agree, Wango, that uh, Gwendolyn's, crit uh, Gwendolyn's portrayal does deserve some criticism. It's it's a very weird... Um, wrong, wrong way, I'm putting my hair over this way, sorry. It's a very weird way to portray a potentially trans or at least gender non-conforming um, character. We're not even talking about the Hogwarts lead, lead dev anymore. I, don't, I should change the title. Yes, the Hogwarts lead dev quit after that Kotaku article. <laughs> very coincidentally. Um, positive news, the American Psychological Association adopted a resolution rebuking conversion therapy on trans patients, correctly citing that being trans is not a mental disorder. Can we get some pogs in chat? Can we get some poggers in chat? The dev left because of... Um... Where's the article? So... There was this article, right? Which, which we did a video on, we already discussed this one. And then later, this came out today. Honestly, like... Oh, yesterday, sorry. Hogwarts Legacy Developer Quits Following Backlash Over YouTube Channel. So that's what we were discussing. Um, and it's speculated, like he... The, the, the stuff he put out, the, the tweets he put out was just like, Oh, I'm very happy, I... It was my own choice to leave the studio, I wish the team all the best of luck. Yada, yada, yada. And, um... The people are obviously freaking out saying he got cancelled Ka yeah Kotaku is pretty sketchy like we did talk about that as well last time like they the the fact that he went kind of radio silent aside from on Twitter liking a bunch of pro Gamergate stuff but like once he started working with the studio they were aware of his YouTube channel they were aware of the content he was working on 
uh, he had worked on, sorry. And um, let me think. Um, they let him continue working on the game, and he dropped his YouTube channel while he was working on Hogwarts Legacy. And now it appears he's going to be coming back with a YouTube video sometime soon that will elucidate what we can, um, I don't know, what his viewpoints are on it. It's kind of, honestly, it is it is gaming news in a sense. Because really it's news around gaming. It's around an upcoming video game, an anticipated video game, so I'm not shocked. Kotaku is obviously a very, very left-leaning article. Some would say rad left. Um, they are very anti-Gamergate. You know, I'm amazed we're still talking about Gamergate in 2021. What the fuck? Um, but anyway, yeah. I, I still feel the article was largely unnecessary on their part. They didn't need to, um, to do that sort of thing. But whatever. Um... The way I see it, Gwendolyn was raised as and takes the role of a woman, yet everyone calls Gwendolyn a boy. It's a little problematic because it can easily be interpreted that trans women are just men in dresses. Fair point. Fair point. Um, don't think Gwendolyn is meant to be a healthy example of gender roles. True. I mean, nothing in Dark Souls is meant to be a good example of anything. A healthy example of anything. <laughs> in every- in Dark Souls, every single person is fucked. Honestly. <laughs> like, even- even, um... Laurentius of the Great Swamp. Even Laurentius. Good boy Laurentius has got a few issues. No, there are no good characters in Dark Souls. Solaire is a healthy... Have you seen the end of his storyline? I, I Don't look up to Solaire. <laughs> Solaire is a perfect example of, um, of an obsessive disorder. Solaire is a perfect example of someone who... You could honestly argue he's autistic, in some ways, and he's definitely got an obsession with finding something that's, quite frankly, not real. Uh, I find Bloodborne really accurate to its depiction of religion. All religions slaughter and end badly. I mean, yes, true. Dost thou even praise the sun? <laughs> Movies have gotten cancelled because of cancel culture, though. Have they? Doing a Lucatiel cosplay build for DS3, fuck yes. But Cartiel's got some badass style. Look into dudeism. <laughs> we were talking about the etymology of dude last night. Um, yeah, he has a not happy ending. I mean, there is a happy ending, but it's arguable what that means in the grand scheme of things. I think, um, and uh, this is another interesting point that some people may not be aware of with regards to Dark Souls is um, originally Oscar of Astora was supposed to be a character that survives the tutorial and becomes a bit of a companion piece throughout the journey. And at the end of the game, he was supposed to, after the final boss, be a follow-up boss fight. And whatever your stance is, um, either linking the fire or leaving it and going the Age of Dark route, um, he was supposed to take the opposite stance, and as a result, um, I'm just trying to think here. I don't know. Yeah, like an Oscar of a story was supposed to have another storyline. I think some of it's actually in the game. Um, it's just hidden in layers and layers of code. Um, you're not, you know, he dies. You're not supposed to keep him around. See a lot of characters from TV and films in the 80s, 90s, thousands who are not trans when taken at face value, but looking at the story symbolically, they could be trans. Maybe the writer intended this with some of those characters. I mean, The Matrix is a massive trans allegory. We could talk about that all night. I am Australian. Yes, I am, Murdy. How you doing? Um, might be having English teacher syndrome on that one. <clears throat> yes, I'm elite hacker. Yes. Totes. Grizzy Gang. Is Neo trans? No, but you could argue... Uh, well, Switch was supposed to be. Switch was supposed to be trans. And... Neo is definitely... Neo definitely has a lot of, um... Trans... Elements to his story. For example, the dead naming. Uh, the feeling of, like, you've lived a fake life all your life, and then waking up to your real self. Can start to provide archive links. Oh, I don't care that much, honestly. 
It's one click. Like these site, what's what's me clicking on their site gonna do? Honestly. Um, welcome to the rogue room. Chiller killer, welcome to the rogue room. Sit down, grab a drink, and chill out with us. Hope you're doing well. Um, what about the Matrix sequels? They're shit. <laughs> Actually, Dell, I believe it's the opposite. Uh, Switch was supposed to be female in the real world, but male in the Matrix, if I'm not mistaken. I may be incorrect there. Um, so it was kind of the inverse of what you would typically expect, because let's be honest, like... Oh, well, I suppose there has been some trans male representation in, in mass media. Um, but there there is definitely... Yeah, it wasn't done. The studio wouldn't let it happen. Um, there is definitely the argument to be made, honestly. Uh, um, I see you. Oh my goodness! Guests. Thank you for the raid, Chiller Killer. Friends. How goes it? How was your stream, by the way? Um, feel like if Neo is trans, he's non-binary, potentially. Um, there is the discussion to be had there with regards to the interpretation of various characters through what they, um, what their stories present, I suppose. Um. You could argue certain subtleties in in different storytelling, in different movies, different books, different games, that suggests that this character is trans, or this character is um, autistic, or this character... Honestly, um, one that annoys me quite a bit, quite frankly, is The Witcher 3. Um, howdy, Beams, how you doing? Or The Witcher in general, sorry. Um, in, in the Witcher books, Geralt is shown to have experienced numerous traumatic physical incidents that have left him with a number of residual effects with his body that have affected, um, like he has pains in his bones when the weather is changing, he has a certain awkward stiffness to his gait, um, and overall, generally speaking, Geralt is disabled, you know, by definition. Um, he's got a number of things wrong with him that cause him physical pain and psychological pain, which I think that's more likely to be touched on in the representations, the psychological pain thing, more than the physical. But The Witcher 3 doesn't touch on any of the physical aspects of his disabilities, um, which the creators of The Witcher series on Netflix have said they're going to consider that when they're working on Season 2 and 3 and all of that sort of thing. So... That's another thing, you know, um, yes, he's disabled, but he can kick some serious ass, yes. He's a witcher, for fuck's sake, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you could do the same thing with any other movie, book, or, and yes, this is obviously English teacher syndrome, you look at a different piece of art, you look at various different pieces of art, and you say, well, I can interpret that this, like I said, I think Soler could be arguably autistic. Based on his hyper-focus on finding his very own son, he's kind of got a, an air of awkward social confidence, I would say. Um, it, it almost, honestly, I'm going to put this out there. It almost feels like Solaire is one of those autistic people I've met who has a ton of confidence and they can put it on. They're just really good at talking to you. But it's a facade because they are socially awkward. So they're putting on a big persona so they feel they seem more likable. And I've done this. I've been this person. That is a very fake cheer. Wait, what? Is that... That's not real. That's an emote. <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> um, <clears throat> felt like you're, am I going to have to, like, start memorizing all the new fake methods of donation? Hey, guys. Guys, check out this awesome donation I'm about to receive. Have you, have you ever seen that one? Someone tried that on me recently. <laughs> someone tried that on- someone tried, you know, uh, X slash me donated millions of dollars. Donated one high five. There you go, you get a high five. Um... <laughs> it's also a Bezos box. Honestly, that gets into the awkward discussion of, like, company towns, right? Like, imagine if Amazon started a town somewhere and you only had Bezos bucks and you couldn't spend them anywhere outside that town. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> yes, Marilyn Manson is an abusive pile of shit. Hey, hey, Emmy, by the way, how you doing? And yes, I will shamefully and shamelessly admit that I adore toss a coin to your Witcher. For the record. Depends on the company, right? 
um, you emerged from a TikTok binge not long ago. You mainly watch videos just to read people arguing in the comments, though. <clears throat> um, Marilyn Manson, yeah, it, it turns out is an abusive piece of shit. As if anybody can be surprised by that. As if anybody could be shocked by that. I mean, really, he's a he's a shock rocker, honestly. Can anyone really be surprised that somebody like him is an abusive cunt? Um, managed to make weird stuff out of my voice clip? Do tell. <laughs> you mean like the homeless shelter at the Amazon Seattle headquarters for its employees? Wait, what, Demacia? Come again? Say that again? I want to revisit um, the Outer Worlds at some point. I think what we may do... Um, here's, a, here's a little bit of a goal. Yeah, share it if you want. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, there's a, like I think what we're going to do with Wednesdays, right, with Wednesday streams, we're going to stick with Bioshock or until we finish Bioshock, which may take a while. As far as I know, let me just quickly... Um, um, let me just look this up. 11 to 12 hours. Okay, so if we keep, if we stick with Bioshock and we sort of just like cruise through the main story, I think there is a fair chunk of um, of side content there in, in Bioshock that can take up more time. But if we breeze through Bioshock's main content in the next few weeks, what we might do is like we'll do that every Wednesday. We'll do Bioshock on Wednesdays and then we'll switch to the Outer Worlds and look through that one because the outer worlds has got a lot of really good political commentary or at least what i've seen and what i've played of it has been pretty good political commentary that we can dive into um and if you have any recommendations for other games that have pretty heavy-handed politics i'd love to hear them love to hear some suggestions we do also have um democratic socialism simulator which mike bought me which i haven't played yet um which is a neat little where is it? Democratic Socialist? Is it Socialist Democrat Simulator or is it Democratic Socialism Simulator? Democratic Socialism Simulator. This. Um, we'll give this a crack. It's it's a you make choices. Um, you make budgetary choices. We need to move from punishment to rehabilitation, more funding to inmates, training, healthcare, and education. And you could choose rehabilitate or punish. Stuff like that. You know, that's what we're going for. You can see my dashboard there. I got my dashboard up. Um, Anyway, that's a that's a thing that we're gonna yeah democratic socialism simulator. It's like four bucks. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to. Um, <laughs> heard on the news about a woman who killed herself because of the minister, but it seems like they aren't even going to start. Oh yes, I do recall something about that Murti, the current rape case surrounding that minister in parliament. Yes, you got to go, but you're hosting me. Thank you, chill. I have a good one. <clears throat> Punish implies that the criminal had free will. We have to get into the free will thing. I don't think I have the patience for the free will philosophy discussion today. <laughs> no, we could. Do we do the free will discussion? Hello, Lemon, by the way. How are you doing? Put on the inconsolables Discord. You have a spicy topic. I have a spicy topic. I have a spicy topic. What's your spicy topic? Have a look. I'm assuming you tagged me in it. Music making. Here we go. Made weird shit out of Abby's voice. Let's listen. Hang on. Here we go. Listening? 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 Hang on. That, that, that melted my mind a bit, honestly. Like, how did you do that? What? I don't understand. I don't understand how music production works. Remember when you're streaming and you look down to see zero viewers, only you're not actually streaming. You're teaching an online lesson in your entire classes. <laughs> what? How does that happen? Or did your, did your lesson actually just end? Was it over? What? Are you serious? Why? What the fuck? Why are they? Why were they even there then? Finally finished making your dinner. When you said surprise homework, it is a weird dream. That's what it's. That's what's like a weird fever dream thing. They've gone to get COVID testing. I would hope so. You don't really agree with it or disagree with it? Disagree with it. Uh, what's your opinion on the new super straight thing? I'll have to have a look. What's super straight? 
Um, I got a video from Regurgitator. Uh, Super Straight, also styled as Super Straight One Word, is a song by Australian rock band Regurgitator. What kind of cheap horror game soundtrack was that? I mean, it fits, honestly. You could you could apply that to a, a cheap horror game. Not the song. Have you got a have you got something that um, refers to what you mean? Free will, are we talking about supernatural? God, I hope not. I'm so annoyed with Supernatural. I was super into that show till like season five or six. And then I was just like, oh god, I'm done. And I kept watching for like three or four more seasons, but still. Uh, Supernatural finally ended recently ish. Season 15. It went on for that long. Jesus fucking Christ. They went from children to middle aged. Howdy, Racer. How's it going? How's it hanging? It's the new trend where people are only attracted to those that were born in the opposite gender. Is that not? Thank you for your membership. Thank you for Please the sub. Enjoy Racer, all the, the delights of the subscriber lounge. It was, supposed to, it was supposed to end at season five, yeah. And then they just come, kept coming up with new villains. It was ridiculous. Um, but is that not just heterosexuality? <laughs> like, isn't that just heterosexual? That's just what straight people are. That's no, that doesn't need to be super straight. Super straight, super straight. Time super not straight now. Very, very lesbian. Just up a bit early. I mean, that's that's not too bad, is it? Being a transphobic heterosexual. I mean, that could that could argue. Yeah, you could argue that point. Um. How do we all feel about the queer angel getting sucked to mega hell as a direct result of coming out while the protagonist... What? What? Can, can I, um... Please clarify, Haley? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm the best streamer, thank you, Box. Anyway, thank you so kindly, by the way racer for that sub thank you so kind i gotta figure out something better for subs i i have the sub lounge but i'm like sort of like i don't like it i'm gonna be genuinely honest with you i don't like it i don't like the sub lounge i don't know what to do with subbies i need to get some kind of alert thing set up or something i don't know you have suggestions i have a suggestion box in my discord if you are not a re and while we're here we might as well just like Plug the, the Twitter, the YouTube, the Instagram, the Facebook, the Discord's not even on the fucking socials list. What is wrong with me? Oh my god. How, Abigail, how do you get this so wrong all the fucking time? Jesus. There we go. Let me fix that up really quickly. Fuck me dead. Um... All right, there we go. Fixed it. Now it's got Discord in there as well. Check out Rogue Elsewhere and join the Discord if you're not already in it. And if you have suggestions on what the fuck to do with subs, let me know. Something that's not too uh, extreme, but something that at least shows some appreciation. Howdy, MYC Gamer. It goes well, it goes well. Um, give pats to subbies. Well, there you go. You get head pats. There you go. Enjoy. There's your there's your pats. <laughs> Is the joke that you dominate the subs? I, I would hope so. I'm at 123 right now. I'm at 123 subs. Down from like 170 something. Because a whole ton of like mass sub bombs have just uh, like, you know, we had sub bombs of fives and tens and things like that. And they've all just run out. <laughs> no one's redeemed. No one's renewed. Um, you actually follow space and science channels as well, so you saw that in Super Straight. Castiel the angel tells Demon, uh, De Demon Dean, he is romantically attracted to him and is immediately sucked to hell as a direct consequence. Dean later goes to heaven and the Impala is there in... Oh my god. What the fuck? What is this show? Oh my god. Like, don't get me wrong, I... Supernatural was always... Let's not beat around the bush. Supernatural was always a very heavy-handed Christian show. Very, very heavy-handed Christian show. But that's on another level of bullshit, mate. Oh my god. 
the fucking car goes to heaven and the gay angel goes to hell. This is a show that was lauded by the queer community so fucking hard through its run. It's one of those shows. It's a, it's one of those shows. <sighs> he goes to mega hell to make it worse. <laughs> like double special hell. Oh my god, that is so bad. That is so flagrantly homophobic, I cannot even. I'm talking in, in Tumblr speak now. I, ca I cannot even. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the worst part of normal hell. Oh my god. Tumblr speak. Tumblr's still around. Do you like the fact that the gay angel got <laughs> sucked to hell? Stop. <laughs> we just killed the devil. It's time to kill his second cousin who is so much stronger and then bitch about it while drinking whiskey with an angel dressed as John Constantine from the comics. DC Comics don't sue. Like hell, but even more hell. Um, Castiel <laughs> got the good suck. Oh, fuck. I do, I do recall um, hearing the controversy about like... Um, all that. I do- I do remember hearing the controversy of like, um, Castiel confessing his love for Dean and then Dean acting disgusted or something? I can't recall exactly, but it was- yeah. Um... I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Jensen Ackles looked revolted in the scene. It's like, dude, holy fuck. The normalization of homophobia is so gross. Um, so let me see here. Um, called the empty and it's like an extra special hell for beings that are too powerful for normal hell. Let me see. The thing that both Haley and I are saying is that it smells like transphobic. It smells transphobic that they're categorizing trans women separately from real women to make that whole new sexuality. Pretty much. And let's not beat around the bush. There is, we already know, honestly, quite frankly. Um, I dare say most of the people I've met in my life are, generally speaking, that level of heterosexual. It's like they, they're not just heterosexual, they're also transphobically heterosexual. You know, I, I've had many discussions with different groups of people um, where the, the topic comes up. It's like, oh, would you date a chick with a dick? And, you know, to, to clarify, as a chick with a dick, <laughs> I wouldn't date those people to begin with because they're disgusting, reprehensible cunts and also, generally speaking, men. But, neither here nor there. Um, saying that if they're not your preference, that's okay. Just don't create a whole new sexuality centered around it. Yes, exactly. Like, you can have a preference. You know, you can have a genital preference if you want. You can want to... Not date someone with a penis. No one's stopping you from doing that. Or a vagina. Um, to create a whole new sexuality. To create, like, to try to specifically define your sexuality around genitalia, I suppose. Very, very dense. Um, forcing hetero people to be in relationships with trans women is the answer. Well, no, no. But like, let's just say, for example, um, let's just say the argument is, and this has been a pretty common transphobic way of representing trans people in media, um, going back quite a while. Let's, let's just change the topic title for a second. Hang on. Um, I can't put trans in the title twice for some reason. Um... I want to change the title or something. I want to continue talking trans stuff.
There we go, that's good. Also, you might have noticed I don't use capital letters in my titles because there are far too many people, quite frankly, who use nothing but capitals in their titles and I can't fucking stand to see it. Anyway, I could put queer in the title now. Um, <clears throat> um, a lot of people are old fashioned, like wanting an heir, for example. Yes, that's, that's very common. Uh, we had this discussion recently. We had this discussion recently where I came across, I guess you could say a friend, um, a friend of a friend, um, uh, or a friend of my ex rather, who came across me at the, at the shopping center, the mall, um, And the discussion we had, like, they knew, like, my ex, sorry, I just had to think about, I had to think about this for a second. My ex is aware of the transition, obviously, because I am the other parent to both of our children, duh. And she told this particular person, this friend of ours, you know, such and such is transitioning, such and such being me. Um, and I came across this person in the, in the, in the shopping center and they, um, we had a bit of a d discussion around, um... The idea of what would happen if I were to get into a relationship with someone. And, and like the first thing that she asks is like, what happens if you get into a relationship with someone and they want kids? It's like, it's a, such a strange thing to approach that as the first thing you ask about a person. Why didn't that work? There we go. Anyway. Um, ben Bradley, MP. Yikesicles on bicycles. I do have kids. I do have kids. Yeah, that was that was honestly the um the thing I was going to th that was the point that I tried to argue back like without being mean. It was like I've already got two children. Why am I going to um why would I want to get into a relationship with someone who wants kids again and uh, like the the um the situation specifically with regarding further children is I've already got two. I don't I don't want more of them, you know? I don't want more children. I have no interest in um, having more kids. So the thing she was saying to me was like, are you going to, you know, save that stuff? Are you going to go freeze some of that? Which, by the way, you have to pay yearly to keep it frozen. So like, no. I don't feel like having a yearly subscription to hold on to some genetic material I don't care about anymore. It's like, I'm one of those people. Um... I am a fine woman, thank you. Like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to pay money to um to preserve something I don't care for. <laughs> yes, indeed, Lemon. I do know how you see me. I'm Abby. Although I tend to, I was going to say like this is not a not a hard and fast rule. Not a hard and fast rule for the record. Um, and is we'll come back to that. Honestly, <laughs> we'll come back to that. There was a tweet that I saw. Um, not a hard and fast rule, but I'm going to try to keep referring to myself on stream as Rogue, I think. I will probably slip and say Abigail and Abby a lot, and I don't care if you folks do. But just for the sake of branding, I'm going to refer to myself as Rogue. Um, no, again, no pressure on any of you folks. If you want to call me Abby, go ahead. I don't care. Um, purpose of life is reproducing, don't you know? If you want, look, let's, let's clarify. If you want to know the meaning of life... Look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> Funny joke. Anyway. <clears throat> um, after a miscarriage and struggling to conceive, you've pretty much given up on the idea of your own children. I'm sorry to hear that, Emmy. What do you do, everyone, for fuck's sake? <laughs> um, if you, you have a wife, that's absolutely great. What is being argued against is the unnecessary distinction between trans and cis women. There's no need to create a whole new sexuality based on that distinction. Agreed. There is no need to create that that whole... Um, yeah, there is no need to specifically define your sexuality based on your genital preference. You know, you can say, I'm straight. I'm not. For the record. I am maybe eking into bisexual, but even that's a stretch. I'm the opposite of straight. But do I have a genital preference? Do you need to know if I have a genital preference? No. Quite frankly, I like to think <laughs> hextextrasexual. 
Welcome Quite frankly, to the Rogue Room. Danny G82, welcome to the Rogue Room. Sit down, grab a drink, and chill out with us. Quite frankly, the um the issue with even revealing your sexuality to a person, unless you are specifically trying to get that level of close to a person. It's really weird that we have this obsession with, uh, like, as a society, we have this obsession with knowing what another person's sexuality is. And it's become such a cultural staple now. It's really unusual to me to think about. It's like, why do I need to know if anyone is straight or gay or bi or anything? I mean, I like pride movement. I like the pride movement. Don't get me wrong. I like people being out and proud. Danny, thank you for the hydration. As soon as he saw a trans, he had to follow. Glad to hear it. Yeah, but what percentage are you? <laughs> Sexuality isn't a big deal, though. It's really not. It's honestly not a big deal. If you get close enough to somebody to find out their sexuality, fine. And yes, at a, um, at a cultural level, we assume heterosexuality. Off the bat. Which is why it's really, honestly, kind of strange to me when people assume I was a gay man before coming out as a trans woman. I specifically am interested in women, always have been. Um, feels like you don't have a preference for genitals. Peen Virgin, you like both, there you go. Um, how can you build trust properly if you can't even be open with them about your past? Yeah, true, like in a relationship, yes. Um, equally as cringe as super gay, the issue is if you're going to have a real relationship with someone, have them accept you, you're going to have to mention that. Well, yes, yes. In a, in the context of a relationship, yes, you would probably want to figure out what your partner is comfortable with. But for example, to define yourself not only by your sexuality, but by the preference for which genitals you like. Um, very weird, very unusual. Anyway. Uh, you used to live in China, and when you were there, the culture in regards to LGB is really from LGBT. Sorry, LGB. Why did I say LGB? Oh my god! I was just transphobic. Someone slap me, please. Um, is really far behind. Even things such as not dating women over the age of twenty-seven. Yeah, I've I've heard that sort of stuff about. Honestly, about Asia in general, China, Japan, Korea. I've heard that they're all pretty backwards with regards to queer stuff. Kind of unsettling and. Um, <clears throat> outdated gender norms, you know. Uh, heterosexuals are more common than any other sexuality. Well, yeah, so that's why it's the assumed default. Sexuality is what makes us different. It doesn't define who we are or why we should be treated differently. It's not a big deal. It's what makes us happy in a relationship. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, you are gay and will always be gay. You will have sex with anyone, though. <laughs> I can't. I said LGB. Oh, my God. I am so bad. Kill me. Um, you think many people will actually define their sexual preference by genitals though? Not directly. This is where it gets weird. Okay. Assume you're a, a cisgender heterosexual man. In my experience, in my personal experience, interacting with other men, and I've interacted with many, the, and this is honestly quite disturbing how common this is. Um, how common this attitude is. I've met many men from many different walks of life. And the attitude of heterosexual men towards women is that's a thing I want to penetrate. And they don't just mean anal. Okay? They specifically want to dominate and penetrate the woman. Typically, subconsciously, at the very least, to impregnate them. Right? That is the general attitude that men tend to espouse. So, the inference is that if the opportunity were to present itself with a transgender woman, they'd probably express disgust. So, the assumed default, especially with regards to men, uh, cisgender men particularly, the assumed default is that they are heterosexual and want a vagina. Right? So, you don't need to infer that. But, now we have these men who are saying they're super straight with the objective of uh, suggesting, okay, not only am I a heterosexual man, specifically I want to fuck a vagina. Or multiple, whatever. 
Like, that's where it gets particularly just really stupid, you know? You want a vagina? Then get one. It only cost you about $30,000. German, <clears throat> thank you for the host. Imagine getting sexed, I know. I'm thinking about, like... <laughs> I'm not touching on this. I'm not. I was going going to make a reference to my sex life. I'm not going. We're not going to touch on that. That didn't happen. That didn't. That never happened. That didn't happen. Sex is a myth. Sex is not. Sex is not real, Snaily. Snaily, Haley, Haley, Snaily. Sex is made up. Doesn't exist. We are all perfect, puritanical little angels. There is no sex. We're not going to touch your sex. Thank you. Please leave my sex alone. <laughs> I'm beginning to think it was an invention by bastards to make me feel sad. I'm going to work out the solution to this paradox. How are you, Gammon? Um, no son of mine will ever be a transgendered individual. Instead, they will be my daughter. Shit, you're right about <laughs> What if they're a trans man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be, no son of mine will be a trans woman. No, hang on, what is it? Yeah, because they'll be my daughter, yeah. Um, not gonna touch on that, just like my sex life. That was the point I was gonna make. <laughs> I have been effectively celibate for months now. Like, I haven't done anything in that vein. I'm just gonna clarify. <laughs> so even, the, even like the, ask, the woman asking me the question is like, oh, what if you meet a woman? And she wants to have kids, and I'm like, well, first she's gonna need to be able to even arouse me in the first place. Like, <laughs> this sex drive's dead, dude. <laughs> uh, it's gone. I threw it out. I threw it out when I transitioned. I'm like, I don't need this anymore. That's a, that's an attachment I don't want to hold on to. Fucking in the bin. <laughs> Get back to me when it's been over a decade. Fair, fair. The Aussie Flex, you've been celibate for months now while well, most of us haven't touched it. Yeah, I, okay, COVID, yeah, I know. I get it, some of you are touch starved because COVID. And keeping in mind, you know, some parts of Australia are still very heavily, um, what's the term? Uh, still locked down. Or are like fluctuating between lockdown and then not locked down and then back to lockdown again. Would like to one day potentially, it's hard to say. Aussies are still touch starved. I just don't want people touching me most of the time. You were touched up before COVID ever showed up. Understandable. Um, yeah, I, I have a thing about touching. It's very awkward. There are many people where I'm just like, don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands around me or anything like that. Most of the time. There are, it's like, I mean, I guess this is normal. This is completely normal, I suppose. Um, but I'm not a cuddly person, Welcome generally speaking. Marty. Well, you were already following, honestly. Welcome to the Rogue Room. Sit down, grab a drink, chill out with us. Um, but this is kind of like, I guess this is normal. This is completely normal um, that people would either like or dislike um, being touched by this person or that. And me personally, um, generally speaking, vast majority of the time, don't touch me. You gotta go now. Have a good one, Murdy. Have a good one. Reminds you of the people. Reminds you, reminds you of the people fucking people in quarantine. How are the, how are the aloes the deviants? <sighs> We're all endy here. Are we all endy? I suppose technically. I mean, there's a poll for you. Yeah, no touchy. There you go, there's a poll for you. Neurodivergent or neurotypical? Just throw that out there. Two minute poll. Are you ND or are you NT? I'm gonna put my vote in because I might as well. If you know what ND or NT are. Neurodivergent, neurotypical. Um, neurodivergent generally meaning someone who is like, um, generally autistic. Uh, or ADHD or someone who experiences generally speaking, social disorders um, or conditions. So neurodivergent is typically autism. Neurotypical is typically not autism. That's the best way to... Thank you for the last check. That's typically the best way to refer to it, quite frankly. Um, but I, this is where it becomes tricky. Is like, I'm certain... 
like for example, a schizophrenic person is neurodivergent. Um, I would argue. Yeah, ND is for anything that's mentally ill, disordered, mental conditions, things like that. Um, can't stand kissing and people think that's weird for some reason. I can understand that. I, I definitely find kissing weird. Honestly, um... <laughs> do you know what that meant? Just went with the crowd voted for Nancy Drew. <laughs> After the poll is done, we're going to take a quick break. Um, but yeah, I, I feel that too, Paige. And I think, honestly, like, there's the, there's the concept of demisexuality, right? Of only being able to engage in a sexual manner with someone you have a specific emotional connection to. And you could extrapolate that to um, stuff that falls outside of sexuality, I suppose. Just hugs, kisses, all of that, you know. Um, but it's weird, like, I won't even hug family members, generally speaking. It's... It's really awkward. You know, I'd leave my... There we go. 16 endies. Four endies. There we go. I, I, even with um, even with family members, I find physical contact is really awkward. I don't kiss anyone on the cheek. I don't hug anyone. You know. Anywho. Nancy Drew versus Northern Territory. <laughs> See you in the NT. All right. I am going to take a quick break. Take a leak. We'll come back. Um, and we'll keep discussing. We've got some stuff here that we can talk about. I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of politics. Do we want to do a bit of the politics? There is something that's a few months old now, quite honestly. This was, uh, this article was published, uh, back in August of last year. But, um, it's still relevant. It's a relevant piece on a political level. So let's come back to how the military uses Call of Duty as a recruitment tool. Don't go away, folks. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're enjoying the content, Throw me just $8.99 a month in Australian dollary dues. Or $9.99 if you're on mobile. Fucking shitty pricing system. And I barely get any of that. I'll be back in a minute, folks. Don't go away.
And here's my eyeshadow. Do you like it? I fucked up this side. Can you see how like smudged that is? And then this side is a nice tapered point. This is the side I'm proud of. This side's a fucking disaster and it's the side I face the camera with. Like, you can sort of tell. Wings are the shit. I'm getting into my wings lately. It's No, it wasn't smudge. <laughs> <clears throat> I have not, uh, I have not watched WandaVision at all yet, honestly. <laughs> I've been, I'm really lazy with shows, I just can't be fucked. Um, let me have a look. What have I missed? You're autistic, generally speaking you hate hugs, but you have three best mates that genuinely miss hugging right now. Uh, that's new within the last year though, you started CBT. Cock and ball torture? Just to be just less awkward? Sorry, I had to make that joke. I just, whenever I see CBT, I'm sorry. Um, and then grew to love hugging your best friends. The trust thing, I can understand that. I can understand that. Honestly, weird thing. Weird thing, really weird thing here. Um, I don't, especially, do not hug men. Interpret that however you wish. Anyway, um, uh, I told you it was like Cobb, but these people have family. <laughs> Uh, you wonder sometimes if you're Demi, as much as you might find other people attractive, you feel a barrier of sorts mentally when it comes to doing something with them if you don't know them. I understand that. You son has hydrocephalus with suspected ADHD and strong mental health family issues. You get to deal with a child that just doesn't understand that his behavior isn't the normal way to interact with other people. That's understandable. Uh, you have PTSD and more research you do, you're finding links to neurodivergence also. You're not sure if you're Demi if you've just been trying to do the sex as the wrong gender all this time. Maybe. The idea of finding a stranger online or something and getting a hotel room to just bat- Yeah, I, I get that, Draco, honestly. And I've been in that predicament, I've done the hookup thing. Um, and there is a certain level of just complete detachment, complete dissociation from the whole thing. Hello, Tomas. My channel history. What are you- what are you specifically asking about? <laughs> um, in regards to my channel history, what specifically are you asking about? I prefer it to be like something that's kind of a serious topic, honestly. If we're going to do the recommended topic thing, like a, a specific news article or whatever, you, whatever you, what have you? Oh my god, I can't speak. Um, does that make you demi? Uh, arguably. Um, long time you felt like you were defective for not wanting this. Literally can't be casual about who you sleep with. Quite frankly, as someone who, um, as someone who's hooked up a few times with people. Um, who's div actually gone to hookups and then ended up developing some level of relationship with that person. Um, it does, it, honestly, it felt like a form of self-punishment. Like, I didn't feel like I was worth having an emotional connection with someone. You know, like, the only type of sex I was allowed to have was emotionally deprived. Have a good one, Fox. Have a good time at work, too. Um, are there people that can do hookups and enjoy it? There's probably a lot of psychology there to talk about the idea of um, doing doing the hooking up. You know, are these people okay? Are they doing this as a form of, um, like I was, are they doing it as a form of self-punishment for whatever reason, or is it just a, genuinely just a thing they enjoy? Um, anyway been going by pansexual this whole time and you only just learn of this. Really, Evelyn? Uh, how, how I was streaming. Um, I mean, I started out on PlayStation 4 playing video games for a long time there. It's only in the past couple of months that I've shifted to just chatting. For the longest time I've streamed, uh, I streamed on console first, then I streamed on um, a laptop connected to my PS4 with a capture card so I could have like overlays and stuff like that, which was fun. Detroit, there you go. And then I eventually moved to a PC. I don't know how I managed to get the money for the PC together. I don't have an answer to that question. <laughs> I've forgotten. I had the money and I bought a PC. Um, and what else? Since then, I've gone through like numerous different games. Minecraft, Skyrim, the Souls games. 
Uh, I've played a fair variety, I think. Played all the way through Horizon Zero Dawn, The Witcher 3. Um, yeah. And then now, I eventually figured out, you know, I would rather do discussion-focused content, and I've found that I really enjoy this. Uh, so that's where we're at now. That's that's basically my story, basically my, my streaming story, I guess, to sum it up, without going into heavy detail. There was a period there where I did the, the Dark Souls series back-to-back, -back doing the Platinum Trophies for Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and Bloodborne. I still haven't done Sekiro yet, and I don't have a PS5, so I can't do Demon Souls. Bit shit. Anyway, um, Amber Heard getting thrown out to the wolves should be a topic. Johnny Depp didn't deserve such abuse. Uh, imagine getting abused by a wife and her telling everyone it's you abusing her. I'm honestly like, uh, the issue with that particular scenario, I hate to be a centrist, but I've heard numerous questionable things about Johnny Depp over the years to the point where I'm looking at the scenario where it's like, I don't know who to believe here, and I'd rather just not touch on it. I. I don't know. It sounds like it was potentially a mutually abusive situation, so I just I prefer not. To, I don't like either of them to begin with, so I just prefer to leave that topic alone. Um, honestly, it definitely seems like people really want to tear the throat out of either one of them, and I'm just like I can't be bothered getting into that. It's just celebrity drama that I don't want to deal with, quite frankly. So my stance on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing is I don't give a fuck. <laughs> We're not like in in cases of abuse, especially like um, like spousal abuse and stuff like that. The issue, of course, is that you've got uh, multiple sides to a story, and none of us were there for any of it. We can't verifiably state one way or the other. So I prefer to leave it alone. Um. Anywho. That aside, it's hard to prove, yeah. It, people need to stop making those types of issues public, true. Um, but if we get into that whole discussion, it also leads down the path of... Um, th that's a very tricky discussion because it can also colour the perceptions of people when it comes to cases of uh, particularly sexual assault against women. You know, when you have... This is ultimately how misogyny manages to stay so alive, is you have the case of... Um, you know, a woman being outed as the abuser, right? You know, it seems like an, an uncommon case. Um, but, you know, the moment a woman is the abuser in the situation, the moment the woman is the suspect in the situation, that gives a ton of confidence to people who already had particularly misogynistic viewpoints. And then they go back down that rabbit hole of, like, any time a woman comes forward with her accusations of abuse, um, there's that sowing of doubt. There's those people, you'll see them in the comment sections. It's like, oh, what about men? What about the men who get a bit? Blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Um, so, the whole thing is fucked, honestly. Like, we have the case now of a woman who was raped in Parliament in, um, like, I think it was 1996. And... She didn't come forward with her story. The story came... I, I don't know all the details. Honestly, I don't know all the details of this scenario, but a minister in Australian government was accused of rape. Um, and another young girl who was worked in Parliament um, also put forth an accusation, who is alive. The other person is dead, which makes that particular scenario very difficult, legally. So, cases of sexual assault and sexual abuse... Um, especially when they're publicized, are a very, very contentious issue that, quite honestly, make a lot of people just generally uncomfortable, even if they haven't personally been abused themselves. It's just a very uncomfortable situation to talk about. And the people who you find are the loudest on this discussion are those who just genuinely don't care about the victims. They're just trying to get a cut in in the discussion. I, I mentioned something about... I, I re, Not retweeted. I'm so used to being on Twitter. I did share a post on Facebook from another page from Anthony Albanese, um, the leader of the opposition here in Australia. And in his post, he talked about how... the Regarding that case, regarding the sexual assault case in Parliament, um, 
it regarding that it's not enough like it, it, his point was that you know we shouldn't be telling women to be more careful we need to be telling men to be better you know that was the general stance that albanese was taking and i i just shared that no further commentary necessary and someone i consider a friend um came at the post with a whole bunch of like we shouldn't be caught we shouldn't be saying this of all men i've never de blah 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 it's really kind of insulting that they treat all men like this like we're the problem clearly missing the point being made you know it's not enough that men do nothing men need to actively work against abusers in alliance with women so and that's always a contentious po uh, point to be made because quite frankly i used to hold that viewpoint um yeah the not all men thing basically basically not all men and <clears throat> yeah my my old stance was like well i never did anything wrong why are you pointing the finger at me it's like you it's like you it's not enough to not be racist you need to be anti-racist that makes sense I, I feel like it's a pretty pretty standard take you know, I feel like that should just be the default, but people are always, <clears throat> people are always honestly looking for something to be contrarian about or trying to feel like they are, especially, honestly, in the case of cisgender, heterosexual, white men, the most privileged people in Western society. They really don't have a lot to worry about, and that's one of the things that they do worry about is the idea that they might get accused of being sex like sexually aggressive towards a woman. They might get accused of sexually assaulting someone or raping someone. That's the one fear they have. The one fear they have is that a woman might accuse them of something wrong. And thus, whenever this issue comes up, they immediately jump on the defensive. It's very telling, honestly. Toxic masculinity is rampant in Australia, it is. It's not all men, but we need a change, yes. There's reasons why men are viewed that way, generally speaking, yes. Because they keep espousing those viewpoints. People like Ronnie Long, who served 44 years for a wrongful conviction. That's honestly kind of the problem with a rehabilitative system. Uh, with a lack of a rehabilitative system, sorry. Um, the system we have now is lock people up and make them suffer punishment rather than rehabilitate them. Rather than try to help these people, give them a... Uh, the path to a better life give them the opportunity for a second chance so that even then yeah i mean it's not great if someone is wrongfully convicted in the case of a rehabilitative justice system but in the case of a rehabilitative justice system even if someone is wrongfully accused it does give them the opportunity to better themselves in other ways if they do have issues um, and it's not destroying their lives it's not taking away their legitimacy as a person as prison tends to do. Prison is a very wrong system. Prison needs to be abolished and a reformative justice system needs to be put in place. A rehabilitative justice system needs to be put in place. So even in the case of wrongful accusation or what have you, um, you're not destroying a person because prison, as prison is, destroys a person's life. What's the prison situation in Australia? Um, I'd need to look into it more distinctly, but as far as I know, it's basically the same. It is a private prison situation. There is definitely, um, I will say what I know of the law enforcement system here in Australia it does seem like it's a fair bit better than America. Our police, for example, require a degree, four years of university, at least, to become an officer. So there's that. Um... You're saying you never see posts by men about... Uh, yeah, exactly. Honestly. So, like, yeah, police officers. You know, the bottom rung of law enforcement require a, a university degree. Compared to America, which is like four to six weeks of a course. And they become a cop. Um, and yeah, like, um, there, is a large, there is a large portion of indigenous people in, um, in Australian prisons, unsurprisingly. So I think... Generally speaking, the prison system is probably a microcosm of American prison systems. Unshockingly. I would need to have a further look into that. I need to get some statistics there. But as far as I know, the, the prison system is 
largely the same. Lock them in a in a small cramped concrete cell. Punish them. Make them suffer. <laughs> you know, that's how it works. Um, yeah, really, unfortunately. In America, it's a six-month program for law enforcement. I, all I've read about the American law enforcement system is it's a very, very short course kind of situation. You can become a cop. I don't know. But what I've heard is it's woefully inadequate regardless. Thinking about this last night, what percentage of men are rapists? I think it must be high, much higher than men realize. Where are they? Most of them are not in prison or been charged. Rape victims must think half the men might have committed rape. Yeah. Honestly. It's a scary thought. And it's not a thought that otherwise innocent men want to face. It's not a reality that otherwise innocent men might uh, want to face. Is that, yeah, there are a lot of rapists out there. There are women rapists too. But the, yes, as I was about to say, Hecklin, and we were going to talk about the devil's advocate thing. Women can rape, but quite frankly, it feels like the proportion of men who do commit rape um, is absurdly high. And again, there's many, many cases where rapes are simply not reported. It's estimated. Um, I need to get the statistics up. But there is a very good estimation of how many rapes go unreported, like percentage-wise. Um, qualified immunity makes it worse. True, we did go on. We did go into uh, qualified immunity. And yes, the point of men get caught more often, women don't. Quite frankly, the the topic you could go into there is that men feel ashamed if they're raped by a woman. You know, it's emasculating. If a woman rapes a man, if a woman forces herself on a man, the man, generally speaking, psychologically says to himself, well, I just had sex, I guess. Yeah, got off, okay. And they tell themselves, you know, it's fine, it's okay, it was just sex. That's, that's how they convince themselves to not think about it. That's how they cope. Whereas with a woman, a woman is m more distinctly going to feel uh, violated if she's raped. And a lot of men, um, yeah, will psychologically cope with it and just convince themselves that nothing happened. Uh, a lot of men have the mindset of, oh, a man can't be raped. That'd be ridiculous, you know? But there are absolutely male rape victims. And, you know, we're not even touching on the, the, the prospect that women can rape women, men can rape men, obviously, duh. But we are using social standards here to have this discussion. Or if a man gets raped by another man, it's again shameful. Yes, exactly. Um, and they don't want to con they don't want to confront that. They don't want to go to law enforcement and say, look, I was raped. They fear that law enforcement are going to laugh at them, are going to treat it as a, a brush it off kind of a situation like oh this woman this little dainty girl raped you why didn't you just push her off if you didn't want it you know there's a lot that goes into that and it's a very very convoluted issue that generally speaking doesn't lead to good results in any circumstance <laughs> sorry i'm so sniffly i can't help that i don't know why i do that um, you say obviously, but yes, according to, honestly, you're not wrong, Cake. According to the UK law, it is impossible for a cis woman to rape anyone because the definition of rape in the UK is penetrative sex on behalf of the perpetrator. So the male needs to penetrate the female. Um, the general, or male needs to penetrate male. Like, the penetrator is the assailant in that circumstance. Um, to the point where I think even legally, if I'm not mistaken, there may have been a case where a man was raped by a woman and she charged him with rape. Or he tried to pursue legal action and because he was the penetrator in the circumstance, it ended up falling on him or something. I can't remember the, the specific details, but I do recall something to that effect. If someone has an, an article that might back that up, I'd love to see it. Thank you. <laughs> I'd, I'm not going to look it up. Um, I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather not. Um, in the few cases you've seen, that is the police's reaction, yes. You wonder if men take over the subject of women's abuse because when they bring up their own abuse in male-dominated domin spaces, the response is generally derision or disbelief. Yes. Quite frankly, that is it. You've been triggered by our news over the last few weeks with all the rape talk. Yeah, I've been trying to avoid it, Emmy. All the rape talk about Parliament and all that. 
has made me just not want to d discuss it. I've got a um, I've got an article up here about Chris D'Elia hit with porn allegations. No, no, not porn allegations. Child porn allegations. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't even really want to talk about it because... And I think it's important to have discussions around rape and sexual assault and open our eyes to how this situation generally goes socially. But it is a very, very uncomfortable discussion to have. It's an uncomfortable topic to talk about. People don't want to talk about sexual assault and rape and all of that. And this is part of the problem. And yes, Hecklin, if anyone needs help, please make sure to seek someone you trust to talk to. And if you need someone, you can talk to Hecklin. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, by the way. Hang on. I don't know why my nose gets sniffly when I'm talking. I don't know why I do this. It's fucking irritating. I'd rather have a runny nose, honestly. And I'm sniffly. Keep sniffling. And it's just a constant, by the way. It's not like a, a, a thing that's happening in the last few days. I'm just... Sn Stop telling people I do lots of cocaine. You have to keep the mental health of stream in check, make sure we're all safe and healthy. That's true. Um, and like, I I enjoy talking about these, not, it, not, not talking about this, but like, I like the idea of tackling heavy topics as a discussion broadly, but I am going to put this point out there right now to anyone who's listening, to all the, to all the folks listening in at home. Coming into a stream, any stream, my stream, your stream, Pixel Smixel stream. Anyone. If you go into a stream and immediately unload your personal drama in the chat, it's off putting and it's distracting and does come across as though you're trying to make the stream about yourself and trying to treat the streamer and chat as your therapist. And there are cases, there are communities where that's okay and that's accepted, but I, just as a general rule, I'm going to put this out there. Try not to do that. Um, because I'm, I'm going to freely admit this right now. I've had it happen on numerous occasions here in my stream. I've had people come in and unload their personal grief. And it's the same as someone coming in with transphobic garbage. I look at it and all of my energy is just sapped. Briefly, you know, it goes away. I get my energy back. I pep back up again. But when I see that, I'm just like, I gotta play therapist now, uh, or I've gotta, I've gotta play the role of someone that I'm, I'm not. I've gotta try to be someone that I'm not. And in that particular circumstance, you know, it, it's just generally a better idea. Like we can approach a heavy topic. You can bring up a heavy topic. But if you come in with your personal drama, if you come in with your personal life issues that are severely impacting you, yeah, I get that you want a, a shoulder to cry on. We all need that sometimes. But going into a stream specifically to just unload is not very nice, honestly. Um, remove the stigmata isn't... Uh, isn't stigmata hang on i'm just gonna clip that right there i didn't well i didn't want to clip it i wanted to stream mark it because i would like to come back and uh use that footage as a as a video for twitter or something um the off of talks extends to youtube thank you thank you Hackwood. i might hit you up for that yeah i was gonna say stigmata isn't isn't it it's a stigma <laughs> stigmata is this uh in Christianity, are the appearance of bodily wounds, scars, and pain in locations corresponding to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus Christ? Uh, where they actually, they do this to themselves, mind you. They do this to themselves and then say, look, I've got this, I've got stigmata. Like they act like it's a real medical illness. It's like, what, did you, did you drive a nail through your hands just for the attention? <laughs> it's not a real thing. It's not a real illness. Um, uh, remove the stigma, but it's also hard as it can trigger. Yes, indeed. Uh, likewise, your DMs are always open. You have plenty of the, you have plenty of tea in the PTSD. You have some experience and you're happy to talk about it. I'm sure everyone, I appreciate it. I'm sure everyone appreciates it. 
I think we are, you think the way we approach it needs review. There needs to be more confidentiality in handling these cases. Fake accusations can ruin lives, even if extremely rare. The problem is that the system itself is not taking it seriously enough, meaning people often go to public to incite enough anger for the genuine pieces of crap to get punished. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the Jesus thing. Um, what was I going to say? There's also a film that one of your best friends loves. Yes, I have heard of the movie. Gotta start your day now, Detroit. Have a good one. Have a very good day, Detroit. Gotta send an exorcist to drive the Jesus out of the body for stigma. <laughs> also, Dogma. I want to watch Dogma. I've, I've heard good things about that one. Kevin Smith. Stigma is what the priests drink after a long day. One half loaf, one half wine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> how was that chat? Did you like that? Did you enjoy that little chit chat there, folks? Dogma is fun. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's okay. Um, you really should get out of bed, but the answer left the window open. <clears throat> is that a good thing or a bad thing? I love Kevin Smith too. He seems like a really good dude. <laughs> you googled stigmata and Shinigami eyes told me the church is bad. Hang on. <laughs> Let me do it again. <clears throat> stigmata. Okay, we'll click on the Wikipedia article. Yeah, I'm getting it too. Eastern Orthodox Church. <laughs> what else is there? Is there any more? Pope Francis? <laughs> oh, that's great. San Francesco, I can't read that. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Um, even though you didn't like Ben Affleck. Yeah, I thought Pope Francis was cool too, but I guess like the, the association with the Catholic Church. So, Afro, we have an extent, well I have an extension, some people, some other people might have an extension too, called uh, Shinigami Eyes. And it, what it does is it highlights trans friendly people in green and trans phobic people in red, generally. Uh, or is it just queer people in general? Uh, is it just related to queer people in general? Where's my extensions? Extensions, here we go. <clears throat> um, Shinigami Eyes ha highlights transphobic slash anti-LGBT and trans-friendly subreddits, users, Facebook pages, groups, etc. with different colors. Basically, that's all it does. Um, I actually applied my own name, and you can check this if you go on my Twitter profile. I should show up as green. I think I should show up as green um, because I guess you could just submit yourself. <laughs> Always love talking to people with different viewpoints, let alone someone as different from yourself as you believe everyone here is. It is refreshing to see other opinions. Put the website in the chat. Um, all right, give me a sec. Let me find the extension. We just go, how do I go to it? Uh, details? I mean, it's just, yeah, that's, that's all, yeah, just Shinigami Eyes is the extension. Um, anyway, apparently neutral. I don't think, I think mine was, like, automatic, honestly. It feels like I just, like, submitted a tweet that I, I said that was obviously trans-friendly. Um, cooking, hoping that eating something gives you a little more spoons, that'd be a good idea, Demacia. Anywho's. Um... No extension for Safari, I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. There might be an alternative. It's a good idea for an extension, honestly. But there are a few people that have come up as red, where I'm just like, everything I've seen of their um, portrayal online doesn't suggest that they are transphobic. And like, I've looked and seen, and in, in fact, you know, they've actually said trans positive things. And it's like, I think some people may have been marked as transphobic a while ago, but are not now sort of thing. I don't know. Speculating. Anyway. Are you red? No, like, uh, Twitch chat names don't count, I don't think. They all come up as their regular colors. Um, but it's it's generally a good idea. Like, you know, there's, there's a few people that show up as, um, as green or red. And it's, it's, you know, it's worth, like, if you see a name that pops up as red, and you can click on it and you can inspect the content yourself. You can go and like read articles or 
anything like that, but it doesn't apply to Twitch chat names. Um, dislike overzealous block list, but if you can still look into them at will, that's better. Yes. Yeah. I feel like with block lists it happens that two people on Twitter gravely misunderstand each other and start wars. Yeah. I'm on a block list apparently on Twitter. Um, for some reason. I don't know what, I think somebody mentioned, ask you to do me. <laughs> <laughs> um, not on stream anyway um uh, what was i gonna say um i am apparently on a block list on twitter because somebody perceived me as the kind of person who would talk about poc related issues that being people of color related issues and being one of those leftists that talks over people of color whatever that means uh, so I'm blocked by a few uh, POC creators I guess because they think I'm going to talk over them for some reason I don't even know where that implication came from I don't know where that idea came from but apparently I'm on that block list whatever that is I don't even know what I would have said that would have inferred that like I actually got blocked by someone um, recently because I shut him down. <laughs> um, I was a bit mean. I was, I, I mean, I'm allowed to be. Fuck him. Fuck this cunt. But this dude was being transphobic. Um, I was, what did I, what did I respond to? I forget. But like we were making, me and Grumpy Scotsman were making jokes about the, um, the Wimixen thing. <laughs> And this dude just chimes in out of nowhere and goes, men, women, only two genders. And I said to him, do you have any original thoughts in your head or... You know, that was, the, that was how I trailed off. And he goes, you tried. And here's where I got mean. I said, and you failed. Here we go, I brought the, brought the thing up. Um, in one tweet, you told everyone you don't think for yourself and merely parrot tired old tropes in a sad attempt to trigger people. No wonder nobody watches your streams. I, I looked up his Twitch tracker profile. Full viewer Andy. Anyway. <laughs> and then um, he goes, no one watches? Why are you trying to attack me and what I do? I didn't attack you. Yes, you did. Yes, you, you came at me with the men, women, only two genders thing, which was not relevant to anything. I was responding to a joke that a friend made, or I made a joke, and we were chit-chatting about the joke. We, we made a joke about the Wimixen thing and this guy flew off the handle and, and did the men, women, only two genders thing. And he goes, I rebutted with facts. You made a dumbass comment and I rebutted with facts. There was no need for a rebuttal. We were making a joke. And I said, you literally made a dumbass, uneducated comment of your own in response to a joke. Self-awareness is not your strong suit, I take it. Blocked. <laughs> I made a tweet recently, honestly, and he even looks like, let's be honest with ourselves, he looks like that kind of person. Anyway, um, they all look, again, the tweet that I posted, transphobes are literally, literally all the same person. They literally are. He's like that meme of like any time um, conservatives, are, you know, triggered by something, the responses are... Dude sitting in a car at an awkward angle with his phone and he's wearing a trucker cap and he's got a beard. Like they're all the same person. Look at this. This is a meme character. This is not a real person. This is a meme. And they all... They all look the same. They all act the same. They say the same things. They're clones. <laughs> Snap queen. Bravo. Thank you. And server cucks have two jokes and neither of them are funny. Uh, one of their jokes is, I'm going to do a racism. Their other joke is, uh, homophobia, transphobia. Their social media profile is a man with sunglasses holding a fish. Oh, uh, fuck. Great. It's great. Um, and honestly, it's kind of a subtle segue, sort of. Because the dude plays Warzone. You love Menu Blanky? I love it too. It's great, isn't it? Emotionally exhausted. <laughs> it's perfect. Also, 
what were my thoughts on the Wimixen thing? Um, I don't think I actually tweeted about the Wimixen thing. Hang on. I don't think I actually put out a tweet. We did do a, a video on it. We did do a YouTube video on it. Hang on a sec. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, I did do this. Um, what the hell? Oh, never mind. Um, I did tweet this. Let's talk about Wimixen tonight, which was in response to the Twitter thing, obviously. Um, but I didn't actually tweet about... Um, oh yeah, this is where the tweet thread came from, by the way. Men that play games are called gamers. Do you know what you call women in gaming? Gamers. It's not that hard, is it? And then I said, sorry, I'm confused. I don't know what women is. Do you mean Wimixen? Right? That was the joke that I was making in response to the twi Twitch thing that they posted on, on Twitter when they said International Women's Month or whatever. Women's History Month, sorry. Wimixen's History Month. And he goes, I did consider commenting about that particular tweet, but I couldn't find the right words and decided to, as a mixin, to leave it alone. And then I said, probably for the best. Okay, I said probably for the best. And then, here's where it kicks off. You're unable to view this tweet because this account of limits is this account owner limits who can view their tweets. That was men, women, two genders, and then the rest of the saga spiraled from there, right? <laughs> you can see the context there. We're we're fucking joking around, <laughs> and the right say we're the triggered little special snowflake. Ooh woo. Let's be triggered snowflakes together, daddy. Also, just to, just to completely, yeah, please clip that. Just to completely segue <clears throat> away from anything. Let's just go back to the blanket for a second. I ordered the blanket and <clears throat> you saw this last night of you here in stream, but I'm going to bring it out again anyway, because I love it. I am in love with this. Sorry, but I have to bring it up again. Look at the dress. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at it. Oh, you like my socks? Socks. Tie-dye socks. Oh my goodness. Ah, what the fuck? Okay, hang on. My headphones are stuck. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> Over poverty, injustice, bigotry, and other forms of social ills. Yes, projection is the principle of conservatism. Um, projection and... Uh, what was it? Um, but I swear Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head never crossed any trans person's mind as something to yell about. Oh, the Dr. Seuss thing? Dr. Seuss thing? The, the right getting triggered about the Dr. Seuss thing when it was literally just the Dr. Seuss estate saying, look, these particular books are a bit, you know, kind of, this is a learning experience. Let's not publish these anymore because they're kind of gross. Let's move on from that, you know? And, um, yeah, the right flew off the handle thinking it was some kind of left-wing conspiracy to ban and cancel Dr. Seuss and literally it was the Seuss estate, not even in response to anything. You got me something, Hecklin. What do you got? Oh, a clip. We got a clip. <laughs> and the right say we're the triggered little special snowflake. Ooh woo. Let's be triggered snowflakes together, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. I hate myself. <laughs> Anyway, anywho, you think Fox News literally talked about Dr. Seuss being cancelled for three days? Oh my god. Feel free to share that clip around the internet at your leisure. Put it on live stream fail. I'm gonna fucking say it. Just go post that shit on live stream fail. I mean, maybe not. It doesn't really have the full context. Kind of the thing, you know. Short form content, good. Although, I may use that as a- I could use that as a short, perhaps. Oh no, what happened? Oh no! 
Hang on a second, Connie. Let me fix you up. Oh no! <laughs> I am so sorry! Can I say I'm glad you're not a sub? Because that would have stripped your sub away if you had one. The coon cheese thing! <laughs> coon is in my bot as a racial slur! Because it's what it is. But, um, it's also a family name! The name of the company that owns the cheese brand. Um... And I do- I did hear about it. I think they have decided on a name change. They are going to rebrand as Cheer Cheese. They're gonna rebrand as Cheer Cheese. Um, so yeah. So yeah, this is the brand of cheese that we're talking about. On January 13, 2021, the Cheer CEO of Saputo Incorporated announced that Coon Cheese was to be branded as Cheer Cheese, the new name scheduled to be launched in July of this year. The name was chosen to signify happiness. I mean, that that's that's cute. I'll give it. That's cute. Even if it does, even if it is a product of massive abuse of cows, you know, even if it is a product of massive institutional animal abuse, but it's happy and cutesy. <laughs> it is. It's their family name, I think. Yes. Um. Unless. <laughs> Hang on. Let me let me actually have a look. Maybe I'm um, maybe I'm wrong. It might not be a family name. Was it a family name? Um, a cheese was marketed by Kraft Walker Cheese Co. as red. I'll stop saying it now. Red C word, but not the C word you're thinking of. Unicorn. There you go. Um, which was not processed in any way, but very finely matured by a secret method, which gives its distinctive mellow flavor and smooth consistency. Um, red was coated, red C was coated with red wax, later replaced with cellophane. Um, from, oh, thank you for the posture check. Yes, like laughing cow. Yeah, their cows are actually laughing. Um, C slur, tasty cheese, starts appearing in the press with an illustrated advertisement showing labels, which call the product, processed product cheddar and the C slur variety sold in eight ounce packages. Described as Kraft Natural Tasty Sea Slur Cheese. Naming controversy. Um, I don't see anything in here that's... I don't, yeah, I don't think it's actually ever been named after a, uh, after a family. There's no mention of a family name here. So it must be... I don't know. Despite the insta ban, the name change seems unnecessary for you. Yes, yes indeed. Maybe it's made from raccoon milk. I mean, I, I think I get where the point is coming from, honestly. Oh, we gotta hydrate. Um... Your indigenous Australian sister has had Red Sea cheese put into a shopping basket by racist chuds in the supermarket as a joke. Oh my god. Alright, naming controversy. Here's what Wikipedia says. The product name which, set, which it shares with a racial slur was defended by previous manufacturers, craft foods, and dairy farmers despite decades-long campaigns to change it, including through challenges to the Australian Human Rights Commission in 1999 and Advertising Standards Bureau in 2001 by Hagen. In the public debate raised by the campaign to change it, some of those who objected to the name claimed that the term was not used as a derogatory term in Australia, um, rather being an American racist term. Dude. If there is one thing I have learned about racial slurs across America and Australia is that we share a lot of the, um... Oh my god, did it again. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> stop. Bot, stop banning people! <laughs> you just gotta type slash unban and then the username. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, if there's one thing I've learned about racial slurs between both America and Australia and anywhere, really, is that they're pretty fucking universal in English-speaking countries. Um, anyway, however, Hagen and Q News reporter Destiny Rogers have said that in their, said that the research in their ebook, Sea Slur, More Holes Than Swiss Cheese, shows that the term was used in Australia as a derogatory term for Indigenous Australians as well as other people of colour, and was especially common between the 1870s and 1939 before fading from the language during World War II and coming back into use in the 1970s. Hagen again challenged the name in 2008 and said that dairy farmers had told him it was explicitly named after Edward Kuhn, there's the word, 
um, who revolutionized the speeding process of making cheese, according to Hagen. The story had only first been mentioned by the brand owners in the 1980s, so bullshit, basically. In the wake of the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests in Australia, on 24th of July 2020, Saputo Incorporated announced the name would be changed. On the 13th of January 2021, Lino A. Saputo, the chair and CEO of Saputo Incorporated, announced that the new name as Cheer Cheese. He said, treating people with respect and without discrimination is one of our basic principles. Hasn't been for the last... Um... 90-something years, but okay, go on. Anyway, go off. Um, the new name will be launched on July 2021. A number of other Australian companies have also rebranded some of their products with... Which have names with racist connotations. Yes, this is actually, um... There's another thing here. Um, there's two other, there's two candy, um, candy brands that were also changed. We had, uh, Redskins, which are now being changed to, like, Red Rippers, and Chi Chico's, which are being rebranded to something else, something else that starts with CH, I forget, but those two were also, you know, racial slur candies in that case. Um... As of 2021, Hagen is claiming legal damages of Australian $2.1 million, what he calls 21 years of corporations undermining his claims that the cheese was, the cheese brand was not named after William Edward C. Slur. There you go. Cheekies, that's it, cheekies. Thank you, Magic. <laughs> Errol, have a good one. Sorry if I missed you there. Sorry, have a good one. You have evidence of a transphobic stream. What has Lexi said? I'd love to raid Lexi. She seems really cool. Hang on. Obviously I'm a trans obviously. Obviously I'm a transphobe. <laughs> Does anyone have the clip of me being transphobic tonight? I feel like I need the clip of me saying LGB. I need to go back and find that. I'm such an asshole. I'm sorry, you can cancel me now. If a slur exists in US English, it's a slur in every other form of English. Yes, exactly. <laughs> transphobic. <laughs> I'm I'm transphobic towards myself. I scare myself sometimes. Um, hope the quartering sees it and covers the c-word cheese name change. That would be funny. I doubt he would though. Um, there are big exceptions. One that immediately comes to mind is the gay slur, that in the UK means cigarette. True. That's pretty common nomenclature. And maybe that should change. Honestly, if Twitter has taught you anything, it's that the worst transphobes are all transgender. <laughs> I've memed about some pretty transphobic stuff, honestly, but it is all just memes and jokes and honestly taking the piss out of transphobes. I've never gone too heavy with it, though. Um, and I think that's that's a coping mechanism, you know. Our, our existence is explicitly just fucking weird. It makes no sense. Just in general to everyone. Not even just trans people, everyone. Our existence is patently ridiculous. Our society is patently ridiculous. That's the very essence of comedy, right? The essence of comedy is to point at the absurdity of the world around us and say, hey, look, this is kind of fun to laugh at. Um, and in that regard, you know, as a trans person, I, I've i made jokes taking the piss out of my transness on occasion. It's like, it's absurd. Yukato says hi. That's... I'm glad to hear that, Unicorn. I say hi back. Hey, Mia, how you going? It beats Facebook for now. Facebook's a fucking cesspool, honestly. Facebook is a fucking cesspool. It is. Flagrantly. Blatantly. I have an article that I would like to regale to you if you would, in, if you would entertain me. If you would listen to my words for a minute. You know what? I'm going to ditch these other two articles because I don't think they're worth talking about. One of them was the Chris D'Elia thing, um, but my makeup looks nice, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Gonna sleep soon as you have work tomorrow morning. Well, that's unfortunate. We don't want you having to go to sleep. Can you imagine how much more shit we'd get done if we didn't have to sleep, dude? Honestly, no, that's a bad idea because capitalism would absolutely take full advantage if they were to develop some kind of a drug that would legitimately keep us awake and productive in such a way that it didn't cause us any significant harm or whatever, um, they would abuse the shit out of that. All employees are required to take awake a doll. 
Hello, pretty bitch. Hello, Zinky. Haven't been to streams lately. Mental health problems. I hope you're feeling a little bit better at least, Zinky. Sorry to hear you're dealing with some mental health stuff. Work from 3 till 10 tonight. Start at 10 tomorrow. That sounds pretty exhausting, honestly. We'd be the meat in the gears even more so than we already are. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of meat in the gears. At least to me, it sounds really stupid. My reaction is normally, you're not in America, you bell it. Oh, 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. That'd be that'd be rough. Yeah, yeah get some sleep. Goodness me. Um, anyway, speaking of the meat in the gears, the meat in the meat grinder. This is an article from back in August, how the military uses Call of Duty as a recruitment tool. Because we've been pretty heavy on, like, um, we've been pretty heavy on, you know, anything that skews right, and the, the military is nothing if not flagrantly a right-wing idea. I mean, the, being, the army needs to go away. Instead of letting trans people into the military, they should have just banned cis people and cancelled the whole thing. But I wanted to get some thoughts on this. I wanted to get some discussion around the idea of uh, specifically military shooters and the propagandist notions thereof, you know. There are several ways that Call of Duty Modern Warfare is used as a recruitment tool alongside other popular esports titles. Depends what you mean, Nobu. Depends what you mean. The Red Army. What's Explain the Red Army to me. <laughs> so, the reason I bring this up is because on numerous occasions I have mentioned that Call of Duty is inherently a propagandist thing. Like, it's designed around... But I, I've always believed it's designed around recruitment. Obviously it is. It's the most glaringly obvious thing you could point out to someone. And yet, routinely when I've brought this up, when I've brought up the fact that games like uh, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, um, anything that puts you in that situation where you're a any sort of military agent um, in any sort of real-life war situation, um, the idea that is retorted back to me is, oh, but it's critical of the military. It's critical of the military-industrial complex. It's critical of the government, blah, 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 blah. And the reality of the situation is propaganda. This is honestly one of the, um, one of the very clever things that modern propaganda tends to do, is it convinces people, the argument now, like it used to be, uh, join the military because you would get to fight for freedom and fight for your country and it's a great and upstanding and noble and honorable thing to join the military. But nowadays the argument has shifted. And now the portrayal of the military is less that kind of thing and more, oh, the army is bad, the military is bad, but it's necessary to preserve America. Generally America, you know, these, these games are all generally based around American military, of course. And that's by design, like they, you know, when they say, oh, when someone comes in and they says, oh, but Call of Duty criticizes the military. They criticize the Reagan administration in Cold War or whatever. Like, yeah, but they sell it to you in such a way where it's, it's portrayed as, you know, a necessary thing. Like, oh, we're so sad we have to go invade that Middle Eastern country, but we need to do it for America. Um, what was the game that took a war crime the US military did, but they ascribed it to the Russians? That was one of the Call of Duties. Um, it was an IRL event that happened, but with the nations flipped. I know what you're talking about. I think it may have been Modern Warfare, which we're talking about here, or maybe another one. There's so many of them, it's hard to say. Um... The United States Army does not condone the killing of unarmed combatants, but this isn't real, so why should you care? Spec Ops, the line loading screen hint. That one actually might be a genuine... Um, we're not talking about the airport mass shooter level, no. No, no, that's something else. Something in a more recent game, there was an actual war crime committed by America that was retconned, basically, in one of the more recent Call of Duty games to blame it on the Russians. And... Yeah, specifically, there's a reason Call of Duty works with the military. Activision and Call of Duty Modern Warfare are major supporters of the US Armed Forces. 
As an example, there have been multiple bundle sales and charity efforts regarding US military recruitment and veteran services. Due to the nature of modern warfare, the connection between the two organizations seems obvious, but the US military has been involved in the gaming world for much longer than just the 2020 release. Um, yeah, you might have stopped caring about the about Call of Duty in the mid-2000s, but a lot of people didn't. Um, here we go. This is what we're thinking of. And it's kind of why I bring it up, because, like, Call of Duty is such a prominent thing, especially, like, if we look at, um, if we just look at Warzone on Twitch. If we just look at Call of Duty Warzone on Twitch. Uh, currently 72.4 thousand viewers. 11.2 million people following the Warzone category on Twitch. Um, obviously it's not going anywhere anytime soon. You could look up any Call of Duty game, honestly. And you'd probably find similar results. Um, Black Ops Cold War, 6.6k viewers. Like, the general idea is that people are interested in Call of Duty. It's not an uncommon thing. And that's the bad thing. There's a lot of people being sold on the idea of being in the military. Play the first call, that was enough to teach you you don't want plot in your FPS games, you want ripping and tearing until it is done. <laughs> the best way to do a shooter. Call of Duty Modern Warfare rewrites the highway of death as a Russian attack rather than American. In Modern Warfare, the latest entry in the Call of Duty first person shooter series, the infamous US attack is fictionalized as Russian rather than American violence. This honestly harkens back to the thing with music, with Sia, the, the Sia movie where you know it's it's a fictional like people have tried to defend this movie saying it's a fictionalized portrayal of autism and thereby why can't a neurotypical person play the autistic character and this is exactly the problem this is this, this is the exact same problem when you fictionalize something you need to be faithful to it otherwise you plant the idea in people's heads that this is what really happened so in this circumstance um what call of duty has done is sold us on the idea that Russia actually committed this war crime. Marshal to place yourself. What if I missed? I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. If you play a milsim, it's going to be armor. Does armor have any connection to the US armed forces? Anyway, in the Modern Warfare single player campaigns, 11th mission, players engage Russian snipers along a war-torn highway in the fictional country of Urkistan. Strewn with burnt-out vehicles and bomb craters, the rebel leader na known, named Farah leads players in an attempt to capture a terrorist leader known as the Wolf. How clever and original that is. While the country and characters are fictionalized, Farah's description of the setting directly references a real-world event. If they try to escape to the mountains, there is only one road, Farah tells the player in a mission briefing. Tariq al-Mat, the Highway of Death. The Russians bombed it during the invasion, killing the people trying to escape. While the but while the attack on a convoy of people escaping is assigned to Russia in modern warfare, the real Highway of Death was an American attack. Highway 80 runs for more than 100 miles connecting Kuwait City with Basra in Iraq. Iraqi tanks rumbled down Highway 80 during the invasion of Kuwait that prompted the Gulf War, while British and US forces headed the other way during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. But it was the events of February 26 and 27, 1991, the two days before the declared end of the Gulf War, that earned Highway 80 the nickname of the Highway of Death. There is a picture of corpses, probably shouldn't show that. On Tuesday, February 26th, US Marine Corps attack jets dropped cluster bombs in front of and behind a column of Iraqi military personnel retreating from, retreating from Kuwait to Iraq two days after US forces swept into Kuwait and easily overwhelmed Iraqi defenses. Thousands of vehicles were forced to a standstill outside of the Kuwaiti town of Al Jara. What ensued was widely described, including by an anonymous Marine general, as a turkey shoot, with Marine, Navy, and, Arm and Air Force planes attacking the massive traffic jam throughout the day and into the next. So there you have it. There's even more detail here, but we won't go into that. Um, yeah. Dead bodies lined up near the highway of death, awaiting burial, burial by the U.S. graves detail. What's the difference between a terrorist cell, a school, and a wedding? Don't ask me, I just pilot the drone. <laughs> America. Fuck yeah. Um, anyway, uh, let me see here. The US Army, Navy, Air Force, and other branches all have a level of investment in the video game world, and the Call of Duty esports community. That's notable because we'll come back to a, um, we'll come to this in a moment. U.S. Army Esports. Due to failures in traditional recruiting methods, the U.S. military has doubled down on its digital recruitment efforts and found unconventional ways to reach prospective soldiers. 
Now this should come as no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention, honestly, but I do think there are probably a number of people out there who play Call of Duty casually and don't realize they're being sold on the idea of joining the military. It's that uh, subconscious uh, subliminal thing. You know, that, that episode of The Simpsons? You got liminal, subliminal, and superliminal. Hey you, join the Navy! Right, that's stupid bullshit. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who play, you know, play COD. I'm gonna play COD, bro. Yeah, Ivanette Niage. I'm gonna play some COD, bro. And then later on, we're gonna go down the shooting range. And then I might check out the recruitment office. Just for the, just for lols. And then, you know, little Johnny is getting sent off to Afghanistan to probably sit around and do nothing for a while before the camp gets blown up. I live in the US, but back in elementary school, every single one of your friends um, who were boys were obsessed with COD and playing it online with friends. Yeah, it's it's like that over here as well. Like over here in Australia, uh, there are so many people like if you get into this into the discussion of like, oh, do you play video games? They'll explicitly ask you more often than not, do you play COD? It's such a routine thing. What's this video, Clara? Um, and it's, it's such a, um, it, it's honestly disturbing how pre prevalent, how prominent Call of Duty is in the gaming space on a worldwide level. Um, the future of digital entertainment was doubted for a long time by experts in the industry. Although the world of video games continued to grow, many skeptics thought that it would be a fad as time progressed into the 90s and personal computers, television sets, and entertainment systems started to become more accessible. The future of video games seemed like a bright and prospering opportunity. The US military found itself ahead of the curve and through the Pentagon have been sponsoring video game development since the early 2000s. In, 2000, in, in 2002, the first person shooter America's Army launched for Windows systems and acted as a brand new recruitment system, allowing players to explore the army at their own pace. This is the earliest use of US Army recruiting in the world of video games, but it is not the last attempt. US Army has spent $32.8 million on America's Army game. Interesting. A free online game that uses the that the army uses as a demonstration training and recruitment device. The fuck? I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, offers real boot camp scenario training, is meant for practical squad based combat, and is a free download for anyone who wants to use it. Why? Because the army hopes you'll like what you see and perhaps consider a trip down to the recruitment office. This is so fucking disturbing. This is something that, you know, we generally consider. Um, we generally look at video games as an escape from the real world, as an escape from the darkness that's around us, which includes the military and all of their actions, which are, you know, constantly in the back of our minds, let's be honest with ourselves. I mean, at least for me, I cannot, quite frankly, stop thinking about atrocities committed by what are supposed to be fellow human beings on other fellow human beings in war zones. You know, it, it, honestly, it gets kind of disturbing when I see stuff that's... Let's not go there, you know. Um, wish the groomer recruiter meme stuck around for longer. Yes. <laughs> the groomer recruiter, oh god. Not dog grooming, no. A 35-year-old recruiter. Hecklin, there you go. I'm recruiting, this is on the Vosh subreddit. 35 year old recruiter. No plans after school? Ah ha ha, that's a shame. You act so mature for your age. What's your malfunction, soldier? Ha, do your parents know about the benefits you get from serving? Wow, I never would have guessed you were that young. <laughs> no, don't go to college first. You're so strong and poor though. Ah ha ha. Welcome to the rogue room. Oh fuck, welcome to the rogue room, Nova One. Sit down and grab a drink and chill out with us. You're spending so much time with your friends, you should spend that time in the middle. <laughs> that sucks you grew up without a dad, haha. -ha. Oh fuck. It is spot- like that's the thing, this is exactly what they- the kind of thing they do, it's fucking disturbing. Um... Anyway. How could you have never seen that meme before? You've, you've seen it now. Wojak memes are great, they are. And the Welcome ring, to the rogue Hecklin, room. type exclamation mark, ring in chat, zoom. Hmm, hang on a sec. Alright, give me a second. Welcome to the rogue room. 
stop for a second. I've seen this before. Go the fuck away, bots. This has happened recently. Um, I don't know. Like, you can't, no point reporting them. Um, I gotta turn that off as well. I'm so over this, dude. I am so over this. Why does this keep happening, Twitch? You've got to do something about this. There we go. I've turned off all alerts. Um. They'll probably keep going until after I finish the stream, but... Dude, come on. When did this start? Let me just find out exactly what minute it started so I can track this. Good lord. A minute ago, so... Yeah, great, cool, fun. Um... Dude, we're trying to chill out, we're trying to hang out, and you're being a fucking asshole whoever's sending these bots out. Um... Now you can follow a normal note, go ahead. Um, did I save that? I think I did save that, yes. Um, let's see here. What was I going to go? So, about 11.40pm. So, I know the name Nova. I'll keep the name Nova in mind. So, basically, no one's allowed to follow right now. Essentially, no one's allowed to follow right now. Well, you are, after all. You're allowed to. Well, it stopped. Okay. It seems like the bot attack stopped after I turned off all the alerts. There we go. Um... Anyways, such a pain in the ass. You stopped it. You did it. Anyway, um, there's your timeout unicorn. Fucking hell, dude. Let me show you something. If you're not aware of this, if you're not already aware of this, let's just do this now. Commander root tools. Um, if you are a streamer and you get hit with one of these things, go to Commander root tools. This website here, and we'll just do this now. Follow a remover. I'll have to do this after stream, I'll log in via Twitch and I'll remove those bots, but you can log in, you log into your account, find when the bot attack happened and you can set in the specific minute, maybe even second, um, and find the accounts that are listed in there. Fortunately for me, all of these bots, I've seen this one before um, on like social media, I've seen on Facebook, like people saying, oh, I got hit with a bot attack by this Zoom bot, whatever the fuck this is. Um, and... So, fortunately, I recognized that straight away this time. And, um, it's just, I don't, I don't know why Twitch refuses to do anything about this, surely. Yeah, C Commander Root is an anti-bot bot. Yes, Commander Root actually turns out is a good bot. We like, we like Commander Root. Um, so yeah, another, another piece of bullshit. Another one of these fucking garbage people sending out this fucking stupid bot. I'm going to take a screen cap of this really quickly, just to illustrate my point, because I'm going to save this and post it on social media. Um, I'm going to I'm going to rant and rave about this, so expect that after the stream. Bot one, there we go, and I'm going to scroll up a bit and um, doo -doo -doo -doo. screen cap that as well, just as evidence. If we can try to, I mean, it, honestly, I don't expect Twitch to do a fucking thing, even if I do send me evidence of it. Twitch are fucking lazy. And somebody came into my chat a little while back while we were playing Bioshock and had a whinge at me about the fact that I criticized Twitch. Uh, it's like, I, I personally believe if you're going to use a platform, you should be critical of that platform, obviously. And Twitch leaves a lot to be desired. Anywho, <clears throat> we were talking about the military. We were talking about the military talk about the evolution into esports it's such a pain in the ass and honestly i'm kind of tempted to leave my follow alerts turned off because that is such an easy attack that is such an easy they don't need to do anything to attack me with a follow right a follow is easy if you have an account you can make obviously they can make thousands of accounts i've been hit with multiple follower follow bot attacks now that have been over eleven thousand followers at once it's ridiculous and um yeah, a follow is an easy alert, so I think I'm just gonna- I'm, I might leave follow alerts turned off. Relevant army recruitment meme. Let's have a look. Alright, uh, Janice, send in my next potential recruit. Hey, you want to 
to join the army. Yep. All right, gentlemen, one at a time. One of you is going to have to wait outside. No, we want to join together. Yeah, we're best friends. And we want to join the army. Fine, fine. Did you fill out your paperwork? Right there. All right, let's see here. We want to be in a plane. Yeah, awesome. Uh, a plane. Yeah, and one of the planes that shoots, not one of those faggy food planes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so God, it's got, it's got that kind of language in it, does it? <laughs> okay. Air Force Division. Oh. I guess. That's where the airplanes are. Oh, Air Force. Air Force. Airplane. Ah. Airplane. Air Force. It's good. Makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so your preferred assignment would be to... Or we want a gun that's so big that you can't even hold it and it needs wheels. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, that sounds more like infantry. I want to parachute at night into a city. Yes! Well, now that's more of an Air Force. Air Force, that sounds cool. It's like the force of the air. That is so radical. Mm. You guys know that this is a serious decision that you're making. Yeah, this is a serious decision we're making. Seriously awesome. <laughs> There's been a lot of fighting lately. Do they let stoners in? I mean, I don't know. Do they? Probably. They probably drug test their... Um, what are they called? The people, the soldiers, they probably drug test people, so they wouldn't let you in necessarily. I don't know. I don't know. Yes! I want to be a terrorist! The terror of the force of the air. Awesome! No, we are against the terrorists. That's right, because they double-crossed us. They were double agents? No, no, that, that's not what happened. My spy name is going to be Sergeant Eagle Fort. And you can call me Crowbar. Yeah, his thing is, he always has a crowbar. And he was raised by eagles in a fort. I think you two should put some serious thought into this. We got this all planned out, baby. Yeah, first thing, we need like a hundred missile launchers. And like 50,000 landmines in our plane. Yeah, then we need you to send the rest of the army ahead of us in what's probably a suicide mission to draw their fire. Then what we're going to do is fly our jet right at the bad guy's main base, and then at the last possible moment, I'm going to pull a hand grenade out of my mouth and throw it in the back with all the landmines and the missiles and stuff, and then we're just going to jump out! Whoa! Whoa. We're going to be like, oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> And then all the bad guys will be on the ground. They'll be like, no, no, no. You guys got to send a stealth bomber to swoop down just at the last minute before the mountain blows up and pick us up. It will be awesome. You both are 18, right? Yep. Today. today. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> kind of perfect, honestly. And kind of, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that fits. That fits. <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, well, I guess if they don't care about drug use, they only do officially. Officially, yeah. They'll they'll make a statement about drug use. Um, what could we what could we look up? That uh, sounds like standard soldier material. Honestly, yeah, quite frankly. And that kind of cycles back around to the dude culture of gamers who think shooting guns in the Middle East is fucking awesome. But we come back to evolution to esports. Esports started gaining mainstream popularity around the same time. As, as of 2015, the Pentagon included electronic games in Instruction 5.4.10.16. But here we go. The military watched as the gaming industry grew and occasionally put out updated versions of their America's Army project. Oh, that's alright. That's alright. We're, we're observing someone else's art in that circumstance. It's an artistic use of the slur. Because obviously, you know, that, that character is um, designed to be a certain portrayal of a certain type of person. Um, as of 2015, the Pentagon included electronic games in Instruction 5.4.10.16. This added video games into the list of varying media that would benefit military service recruiting and retention programs. Read propaganda, which eventually grew into esports and U.S. Army using social media for recruitment. The dumber ones joined the Marines. Uh, esports started gaining mainstream popularity around the same time and continued to grow into the competitive empire that fans can see today. As of 2018, the military had founded its own esports team, putting another voice in the unmonitored world of competitive gaming. As online gaming continued to grow in popularity, the US military continued to expand into streaming and competing in other popular games. So, for those of you who are not aware, uh, there, was a, there was a big joke about this, there was a big meme about this all over social media, all over Twitter, when the US Army esports page came into being. I think. Um, Twitch US Army Esports War Crimes. There was a big... Oh, no, no. I've, I've searched that on... I didn't want to search that on Twitch. Uh, 
I see you. Oh my god, no this. comment check. Hello. Welcome, friends. Hello, friendos. Welcome to the rogue room. Hello, raiders. I I apologize in advance. I don't have some massive elaborate raid response thing. <laughs> How was your stream? What were you getting up to tonight? Thank you for that shout out, Hecklin. Meow meow. What's going on? What were you doing in just chatting tonight? What were you talking about? Based based raid. I, I need to up my uh, my trans cat girl game. I don't have cat ears yet. I'm ashamed to admit I lack cat ears. How you doing, folks? How you doing, raiders? It is a massive fucking raid. It is a massive raid. And I greatly appreciate it. Played the Viking game and complained about transphobes. That sounds like a lovely night. I'm assuming you mean Valheim, right? <laughs> I mean... I'm going to freely concede this. I got a free key for Rune 2, not Valheim, uh, for Rune 2 Decapitation Edition a little while back. Don't buy Rune 2. Not good. It's in fact the opposite of good. Anywho. <laughs> the raid. Well, the raid is, I guess, ongoing. It's sort of a... It's an ongoing situation. It's perpetuating right now. What what specific transphobes are we complaining about today? Is it Graham Linnan? Is it Joanne Rowling? Is it Ben Shapiro? Was, did Ben Shapiro say something transphobic today? Was it Gina Carano? We could just rattle off transphobes all the live long day. Glenn Greenwald! Oh, yes, I forgot about him. I'm going to have to have a glance at what he said. I'm not shocked, honestly. Um, Valheim is fun, but you need to figure out how to tame a wild boar. I've heard, I've heard many good things about Valheim. Um, I may have to give it a crack at some point, honestly. Sounds like a good old time. We were just talking about military propaganda in US Army Esports and Call of Duty. <laughs> Which is kind of amusing, because I have no interest whatsoever in any kind of milsim game, but... We're talking about propagandism. Propaganda. Good night, Unicorn. Have a good sleep. Not just transphobia. Oh, yeah, the biophobia thing. I do recall that. I do distinctly recall that. Um, I feel like the, it was... It was was it largely the biophobia that everybody was having an issue with? And the transphobia was kind of tacked on? It seemed like. It seemed like this major... Or at least, that's what I saw on Twitter, at the, at the very least. People were going off at Glenn Greenwald specifically for, essentially, bi erasure, Right? Like Minecraft with Vikings, that's what we like to hear. Yes, biphobia. We don't like to see it. Glenn Cringewald. <laughs> Let me have a look. Let me look him up. Ah. Let's see if maybe there's some... Uh... That's from ages ago. That's not what we want. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, I remember reading this. I think we may have actually gone over this. Um, yeah, what what kind of... I think we did actually briefly touch on this this thread, which um, some really fascinating findings in this new big new Gallup survey on Americans identifying as LGBT, in quotes, in air quotes. You know what that means, of course. It leads to lots of deeper investigation to understand what explains some of their these astronomical changes. Here's a crazy thought for you. Here's a, here's a wild concept for you. Cultural acceptance of queer people is what leads to those changes, Glenn. It's not rocket science. Oh, it was the wrong button. Wow, who doesn't understand how culture works? What a shock. What a shock. A little something for everyone. Trans women, trans guys, and bisexuals who aren't currently in same-sex relationships. I know. What do they think bisexual means? What exactly do they think bisexual means? A culture shock. Just a bit. Just a little bit of a culture shock. <laughs> oh, okay, so, sorry, I have turned my follow alerts off. I can see you folks following. Uh, let me go back really quickly. TSE Glun. We already thanked uh, Afro. Yowlets. A fantastico. Sayonay's the instrument. Shuffle Kitty the cat. I'm sorry I have not seen your um your follow alerts because I just turned them off because we just got a bot attack, but we preemptively 
nipped it in the bud, thankfully, by shutting off every follow alert on this channel, which seems to shut down the bot for some reason. If you can turn off all your follow bot alerts, so I'm now going to have to go back and use commander root tools after this stream and fix that up, which is a pain in the ass, honestly. I don't have a, um, I can actually, actually, honestly, hyper, let me just check something. Type exclamation mark friend. Type exclamation mark friend, Hyper. And you can add me on Steam that way. There you go. I should change it so that it's, um... This is it, if you folks want... There we go. My Steam friend code is that. You can you can be my friends, folks. You can be my friends if you want to. Um... Click here to be taken to the official Discord server. If you are interested in further discourse, which is honestly nowhere near as deep, um, about... Uh, no, nowhere near as deep as what we talk about here on stream, but you know, if you want to join the Discord and hang out and chill out, there's the link. It's a pretty chill place. You can share pictures of your cats, your lunch. <clears throat> yes, I do. I do know of Commander Root. Yes, um, we were actually just talking about that. I've been hit with three separate follow bot attacks now. No, four. That would be the fourth one. Sorry. Um, way back, I had. I got follow botted when I was playing Minecraft, honestly, like just over a year ago, back in February. And then almost literally a, an entire year later, I got hit with another follow bot attack. So both in like mid-February, a year apart, hit with two massive follow bot attacks that were about 11,000 followers each, which was ridiculous. And I got rid of both of those. And then... Um, there was an earlier one, which was only like a thousand followers. Got rid of that one. Um, and now I've got another couple hundred here that I have to get rid of. Or maybe it's only honestly just shy of a hundred, actually. They didn't really hit me with that much. Because I'm Wolf Gamer BDE Bone, welcome to the Rogue Room. Sit down, grab a drink, chill out with us, folks. Um, obviously, you lose the binder sucked out of you for being a het presenting relationship. Never know you, you never know you know that. You can never know you like ever do anything gay again, ever. I can't read, I'm sorry. It's like midnight. Forgive me, it's it's 11.57 p.m. <laughs> Added, did I add you back? I think I did, yes, I did. I believe I did. There we go. Uh, sometime soon, honestly. I can't English, I forgot how to. Sometime soon. This is not related to anything, but uh, since I've got Steam up, I've just, you know, I've just looked over this. We're going to play Democratic Socialism Simulator. <laughs> and yes, indeed, Hyper, sometime soon we will frag. We're going to play some Quake Champ- well, Quake Live, not Quake Champions. Quake Live. What's Quake Champions, actually, on that note? What's Quake Champions? Is that the same thing, or is that a different thing? That's a different thing, isn't it? But yes, I'll have to pick up Quake Live. And we'll do that. We'll do that dang thing. Quake live. Quake champions is good but dead. Okay, but yeah, this is this is the throwback. I'm gonna be giving this a crack at some point in the not too distant future. Ugh, the game to trigger tankies and chuds. That's what we like. We like to see it. And of course, you can entirely expect when we play Quake live. I'm gonna play Crash. I'm gonna play as Crash because female Doom Slayer. Like yes. Please. Anyway, um, we did kind of, yeah, the, the bot attack, honestly, before he is raided. And again, thank you so kindly, for comment check. I was actually looking at raiding you last night, but I think someone recommended... Who did we raid last night? You did come across, yeah, you did come across my, one of my... I'll have to, I'll have to repay the favor now. <laughs> you were a consideration for a raid last night, but somebody recommended someone new. I've forgotten who they were. Now. Oh, Quisty. We read a Quisty. Not Crash Bandicoot. Crash the female Doom Slayer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what's Commander Root? Um, if you get hit with a follow bot attack. Oh God, there's some rule 34 in the search results here when I look at Crash. Anyway, um, Commander Root. Let me have a look here. Let me bring this up. Commander Root is, if you get hit with a follow bot attack, or there's a, there's a bunch of other useful stuff on here, you can go on this, um, and you can go to Follower Remover, and very conveniently, I'll just, um, let me see if I can find this. Where did I save those screenshots? Yeah, very conveniently, the bots that follow botted me all had the name Zoom in them, so that makes life easier. Um, very obvious bot attack. This is what it looked like, and it was just 
uh, at least a couple dozen of those. So we managed to shut it down before it really got bad. But on this, you can go to, you can look at your follower list, following list, subscriber list, block ignore list. Clip manager, like they've got a bunch of useful tools here, but the follower remover is the one that a lot of people use because follow bots are becoming honestly quite prominent on Twitch and it's really frustrating. Hello, Sarah Starchart, how are you doing? It's fucking frustrating. So just Google commander root tools um, or here's the link if you do need it at some point. I should honestly turn that into a command because it's becoming so routine now that I have to use it and explain it. <laughs> Such an absolute pain in the ass, honestly. But we're actually, I think we are just winding down. Because we, we were talking, we didn't even get into the discussion of like what bad faith is and what devil's advocacy is and all that sort of stuff. We didn't even get into that. I wanted to talk about like a few social conventions. The concept of the devil's advocate, the concept of contrarians, the concept of reactionaries, bad faith arguments. Honestly, I think I need to get some resources together like some videos and stuff where we can look at exactly what bad faith arguments are and what contrarianism actually is and what reactionary behavior is. Because I want to do a, I want to do a stream on that particular topic. Not R34 Crash Bandicoot, R34 Crash from Quake. This is what we were going to talk about. Hyper and I plan on playing Quake Live soon. And Quake Live has just enhanced Quake 3, basically. Quake 3, which was an arena shooter primarily. Um, and... This is Crash. She's the she's actually the commanding officer of the Doom guy, um, who is also in Quake Three as a playable character. And there was recently a bit of discourse around the concept because the one of the lead devs or the um, director of uh, Doom Eternal mentioned something about the idea of a female Doom Slayer, and everyone on social media was like, "Crash exists." She's a character that already exists. Give her, give us a Crash game, basically. <laughs> Just give us Crash. Although I think um, they might have to name it a certain way um, in order to avoid perhaps copyright infringement with Crash Bandicoot. Um, yeah, bit of an armor weak spot around the vital organs. But it's it's that sort of it's that bullshit. <laughs> Crash Bandy Doom. <laughs> but I mean, I, I feel like the Doom Slayer just has, like, you, you've seen the Doom Slayer's arms, right? I just imagine that Crash has got such a tight, very muscular midsection that she doesn't care about that. She wouldn't give no fucks. And honestly, even, you know, even coming from an era where female characters were intensely sexualized, it's not even that bad in terms of sexualization, quite frankly. Not even that bad. You know, from that particular era when so many female characters were designed around ridiculous levels of sexualization. This is comparatively conservative. Contrasted with, um, yeah, her abs are made of raw iron. We know nothing about Doom Guy other than they have arms. There's so little characterization. Who's to say they're not a woman? I think actually they do show a very brief glimpse of his face in Doom Eternal, and you can very clearly see particularly masculinized features stubble um which kind of takes away from it i think i i prefer the doom guy to just be a visor i don't want any facial features for the doom guy i want the doom guy to just be the visor nothing else no face beneath it that's kind of what's so perfect about the character um better than unreal tournament for sure that kind of fell off didn't it what's with um what's with unreal tournament these days it's Fortnite now. Unreal Tournament became Fortnite. Nobody should be sexualized in those boots. <laughs> those are those are skull stomping boots. Those are demon slaying boots. You stomp a mud hole in some demons and you walk it dry in those things. Yeah, I know Fortnite. I mean it's the same dev, Epic Games. Um was was Tim Sweeney still involved with Epic Games around the era of um, Unreal Tournament? I know Cliff Blazinski was. Cliff Blazinski was around for Unreal Tournament. And then he, he ended up leaving Epic after um, Gears of War. 
at some point. Or Doom Battle Unreal. <laughs> Those boots were made for slaying. And that's just what they'll do. Um, I, I don't think I ever actually played Unreal Tournament. I've seen friends play it. But honestly, I've always had this thing, quite frankly. And Quake 3 and Doom... Uh, Doom 2016 in particular. Like, those arena shooters are primarily... Um, those, like, fast-paced, frenetic kind of shooters are the only kind of shooters I've ever liked. So any of, like, the gritty, boots-to-the-ground realism shooters lose me in an instant. You cannot get me to play those kind of shooters. But quite frankly, it's kind of interesting that I never got into Unreal Tournament given how much I like Doom and Quake and all that. Um, and honestly, like, going back even further... Well, not even further, not really. But one of the major shooters I invested a ton of time into as a kid was Jedi Academy, which primarily I played that for the lightsabers. <laughs> um, Epic Games is making Darkest Dungeon 2. I haven't even played Darkest Dungeon, so I barely know what it's about. Original Unreal Tournament has good music, mainly by the same person as Deus Ex. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I had a, I had a clan in Jedi Academy. I've, I think I had a few, actually. I went through a few of them. I, I distinctly remember the atmosphere, atmosphere, sorry, of being in a clan in, in Jedi Academy. It was such a cool thing back then. Nowadays, it, all that sort of thing has shifted to esports and stuff. Before, it was like um, a sense of community and something like along those lines. Um, you know, you just got together and hung out in the game and just chill. Yeah, I was in, I was in an RP clan at one stage. All, all, all good times. But, you know, now I look at, you know, communities in gaming and it seems like it, the vast majority of it is like, let's make it, let's make it in the esports scene, man. Let's get on, on Valorant and play for 16 hours a day. We're going to get in the big leagues, bro. Blah. Blah. You miss the LAN parties your clan used to hold? It sounds cool. I miss those days, man. But I don't think I could get heavily into... Um, too heavily into, um, like, gaming clan sort of stuff these days. Thank you for the hydrate, Emmy. Could probably spin up a JK3 server on your VPS. I've had difficulties getting Jedi Academy to run on occasion. Last time I managed to get it to run okay. But it's honestly complex to get it running these days. Also, on the subject of Unreal, uh, Epic Games, sorry. Um... Did you hear Epic Games bought Fall Guys, bought Mediatonic? So that's going to be interesting for anyone who owns it on Steam. I think I do, actually. Yeah, I don't play it anymore, but that's going to be interesting. Going to be a thing. <laughs> There's some news. Going to be Flop Guys. <laughs> Dad had a land group getting together for a weekend and cooking food and gaming. That sounds awesome. That sounds like a good. That sounds like a good night. I'm gonna need to set something like that up. I don't know how I'd do it, but you know, we've had um, we've had discussions around. We had we had our drinks night recently, um, which resulted in me being very sick for days after the fact. Calga. But anyway, um. No, that would be a good thing to do. Do some sort of a collab stream where, you know, me and whoever gets together. We do some cooking. We do some gaming. We chill. I reckon. At some point. Figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> I think we've had a good stream tonight. And, of course, no comment, Chick. Thank you so kindly. For that massive raid right at the, right at the end here. Appreciate you all being here. Seven of Cube, thank you for the follow two minutes ago. Um, welcome to the Rogue Room. Sit down, grab a drink, chill out with us. I think it's about time we call it there, though. Feel, for, feel sorry for anyone forced into the Fortnite labor mines. I'm looking at something really quickly. Um, let's have a look here. Who could we harass tonight? Who do you feel like harassing tonight? Um... Thank you for your wonderful company too, Emmy. Quite frankly. Original Sin, what are they doing? Where are they? I think I'm following them. Hang on. It's a good idea.
Oh, for fucking ads. Fucking ads, mate. I'm a rat ass. That sounds kind of sounds kind of weird, honestly. I don't know. I don't know how to take that one. <laughs> At any rate, let's go. Let's go say hi to Original Sin, who's doing some arts and crafts, doing some crocheting by the looks of things. That's fucking cool. We like to see it. I was gonna say, am I even following them? But yes, it turns out I am. Badass. No, I, I'm joking. I like it. It sounds good. Rad ass. I'm very rad because I have a skateboard. As you can clearly see, I am radical as all fuck. I am not only... I, I am the most radical leftist. I have a guitar, I have a skateboard. This is radical leftism. <laughs> Thank you everybody for hanging out tonight, you've all been lovely. Does leftism exist in 2021? I don't even know anymore. Yeah, it definitely seems like everyone's either centrist or right-wing. And centrism inherently leans right, so... I consider myself leftist at the very least. Yeah, the spider, skateboard, spider, guitar. I'm as radical as they come, dudes. Gnarly. All right, we're gonna go raid Sin. Have a good one. If you've not already followed all the socials, here they are in one convenient little command. Twitter, Discord, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. There is a Facebook page, which I do post to sometimes. Anyway, have a good one. See you when I'm looking at you. You lovely bastard. I saw that come out though.